Welcome to Apex Racing TV, welcome to the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup where tonight we're racing around the big one, the Nürburgring, not just the Nordschleife but the, uh, the Grand Prix circuit, or a bit of the Grand Prix circuit as well. Welcome everybody, Adam Bath here in the com bo comms box with you tonight and alongside me and on the cameras as well doing Tubble GC. it is Sam Kumo and Sam it is, uh, yeah it's the Nordschleife, it's the Nürburgring, it's part of the Grand Prix circuit as well. Uh, three very long races I think we're going to see tonight, three laps in length in each. Yeah, uh, good evening everyone, and here we are back in the booth. Uh, yep, it's going to be three lap races, and I think the admins have realized as it the previous season when we went four laps and it was a really long race. So this will be limited to three laps, uh, unlike the usual time races. But we'll see, this is going to be uh, around uh, 71 kilometers, and every one of them will be challenging for these guys. Yeah, 23.86 kilometers, 164 corners. Uh, just to give you some idea of the challenges that these drivers are going to be facing. Or well, qualifying is just under what well, I was just finished actually, uh, just because uh, we want to get these races on the move as quickly as we can. And uh, we're running through the championship standings going into this race meeting. Selian Chapalevsky currently on pole position in the uh, qualifying session and currently leading the points. Second is Ash Beard, third is Dan Hunt, Anna McNally in fourth, uh, Rob Hartley in fifth. 6th Steve Heppard, 7th Roy Verke, 8th Brian Holmes, 9th Kevin Woods, uh, the highest of the privateers, and 10th is Lorne Murray. In the, uh, in the AM standings, Roy Verke leads the way there, ahead of Kevin Woods in 2nd, Martin Waltham in 3rd, Max Wright 4th, and Kip Stevens in 5th with uh, Ben Landemore, Peter Van Gaal, Adam Delmont, Michael Barry, and uh, Matthew Kiba rounding up the top 10. And in the team standings, it's MHR Foxworth Racing with a 300 or so point lead, of a team Momo in second, Youth Energy third, Automech fourth, ProSim fifth, uh, BAM Esports in sixth, DM Racing .uk in seventh, Super GT Racing in eighth, Just Having Fun Racing in ninth, We Are Grip in tenth, and uh, Team uh, Bush Fink Racing in Black Adder Motorsport uh, haven't got any points on the board so far. Uh, Rex Wright just coming around to complete his qualifying lap now. You'll notice that. Uh, he's not going to be turning right like we were when we were racing on the circuit last season. Going to be going on to the Grand Prix circuit and see how Max Wright does. Over the timing line he goes and he does a 9 minutes 28.842. That is an improvement on his time but it keeps him still in 12th place. Any other drivers uh, that are still on qualifying uh, runs now. Uh, Alan Mitchell just going on to the uh, Dottinger Hoa and uh, we're probably going to be seeing some of the MX-5 is reaching, reaching really the their top speeds down this uh, very long straight. Yeah, they will be definitely hitting the limiter here. And I don't think even the draft will help them uh, a whole lot. But we'll see how many are still grouped together after the first lap. There he goes. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to work out how long uh, that straight is. I think, uh, I think I'm reading here. Uh, it says 3 to 4 kilometers I think um, oh, so it's a one kilometer actually as we go down the straight maybe even longer than that actually but uh, yeah going into the into the S's section it's very quick section here to end the lap and uh, Alan Mitchell whereabouts is he on the grid at the moment he is currently uh, yes 23rd 23rd see if he's able to improve on that now, hasn't been able to set a time yet Alan Mitchell, quite a few drivers haven't set times actually, uh, if you, even if you pick up just one off-track point around this very big lap, uh, that is your lap invalidated and uh, will be very frustrating for these guys. Over the line goes Alan Mitchell and he must have picked up an off-track somewhere because that is another invalid lap. Yep, uh, who else do we have? We have Kip Stevens still on the lap and only 15 drivers have been able to set a lap time so far. And yeah. Kip has set that lap time, but uh, let's see if he's able to improve it. Well, he's got a bit of a way to go. Uh, the last car to set a valid lap time is uh, Lee Barmer in 15th place with a 9 minute 52 lap. Just shows you an idea of the, uh, the, the length for a driver to complete a lap around here in a Mazda X5. Uh, we're going to be seeing three races, uh, three laps in length. And uh, that is uh, going to be... Uh, the format tonight, instead of the timed races that we usually have, as Sam was saying at the beginning of the show, usually have three 15-minute races. Uh, but yeah, here we're going for laps because I think when we were doing 15-minute races last season, 
we ended up having four laps and we did go on for quite some time because uh, Sam not only did um, we have to negotiate those four laps but uh, any driver that was very slow and uh, was still on the same lap as the leaders uh, we had to wait some time for them to finish as well yeah I mean even normal lap takes a while here but then if you have a damaged car and have to just nurse it back home then that takes even longer and this is so bumpy and uh, treacherous track that uh, you really have to take care if you have any kind of damage with your with your car. Uh, the Porsche, uh, the Porsche official series was racing around this circuit uh, the other week. Did you get much chance to have a go in that in the official series? Uh, I just ran a uh, one lap. At that point, I was already practicing for the Nurburgring, where I oh, yeah. ran the Audi. Didn't do too badly in that uh, either. So yeah, familiar <laughs> familiar with this track. Mm -hmm. Um, bike. Uh, how, does it take long for a, for a driver to learn this circuit, or uh, once you've done a few laps, do you start to really get a hang of uh, which corners are which? Uh, it's like every other track. You just to get the uh, repeat, repeat, and then you start to rem remember the corners. And I think at this point, I would just uh, like uh, walk through the whole circuit, eyes closed. Probably agree there, actually. Uh, uh, first came across this track, oh, first had a go on this track, I think, on uh, Gran Turismo 4 uh, back mm -hmm. in the day. And, um, and uh, yeah, that was a good 13 or 14 years ago. Quite familiar with this circuit now. And, uh, yeah, Kip Stevens just about to finish the lap now, going into the final chicane over those curbs. And the two-time BSR TC champion won the BSR Winter Series in this car as well. Looks like the final corner onto the pit straight. And uh, to improve on his lap time, possibly 9.28.056 is his personal best. Comes over a 9.26.153. That is an improvement. Uh, yes, by quite a big improvement actually. Two seconds, or uh, two seconds probably isn't too much around this lap, but uh, yeah, Kip Stevens finds some time, and that leaps him up inside the top ten. I think that's everyone. Might lie actually. No, Alan Mitchell's still on the lap. However, yeah, but the I don't think flag that came out. Yeah, that is. Just his uh, in lap. Well then, uh, hopefully we don't have to wait for him to complete that. Uh, but we can run you through the uh, the grid then for the first race of the day. Three laps around the circuit. Uh, 21 degrees ambient temperature, 21 degrees track temperature as well. So it's a pretty cool day here in uh, in Germany. And uh, Stelian Chapolevsky is going to be starting on pole position. The championship leader, Giuseppe Iannucci, starting in second. Third, Nicholas uh, Tamens. 4th David Hampson, 5th Brian Holmes, 6th Drees Nice, 7th Ash Beard, the reigning champion, 8th Pete Newman, 9th Kip Stevens with that late lap to get him inside the top 10, and Jamie Ayres in 10th. Adam McNally 11th, Max Wright 12th, Colin Robinson uh, in 13th, 14th Steve Hefford, 15th Lee Barmer, the last car to set a valid lap, and then the cars uh, that didn't. Uh, they're not going to be in this specific order, uh, because they didn't set times, they will be set in terms of their I rating. So it's most certain that uh, Rob Hartley's going to be uh, the next car in 16th. And then uh, 17th will be, just trying to find the next highest die rating, uh, will probably be uh, lead, uh, will be Christoph Kiard actually. He's got 3,000 die rating. And um, uh, to save time, we'll probably run you through that last few sections, <laughs> that, that last part of the grid. Pretty much last half of the grid, in fact, Sam. Only half the, the grid was able to set time um, uh, when we advanced to the race. Yeah, that might be the best. Uh, we'll see the final grid when we get there. I can tell you the car that will be definitely starting in last is Dave Christie because uh, his I rating is uh, 673. And uh, that is the lowest in the field. So. And I think that might be Dave's... Uh, has he raced before in the season? I don't think so. He's, yeah, he's done the occasional race, I think, last season. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I saw his name on the entry list as a new entry, so that might be the first time for him. I'm trying to, yeah, he's a uh, comment commentator at Knock Hill. There's a lot of racing there, but this is a far cry from Knock Hill and a far cry from Donington Park as well, where we were last week in the, uh, the BSR Master Mix 5 Cup. Saw some great racing there, actually. And a bit of uh, a bit of crazy racing at one point as well. Um, some interesting moments in terms of the championship, too. So, uh, yeah, not too long to go now. Uh, I presume we're going to be seeing out these two minutes. Uh, and then we can get this show on the road. It's just coming up to uh, quarter past eight here, UK time. And 
Uh, don't forget that the uh, the Club 73 Touring Car Championship will also be taking place uh, later on tonight. Uh, the drivers there racing round Laguna Seca, another chal challenging circuit in the world of motorsport, while we're racing here at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. And uh, this this uh, this uh, Jezam Strecker short without the arena section, Sam, it pretty much is the uh, the Grand Prix circuit, but without the Dunlop curve and that and the Schumacher S, and also we miss out the uh, the arena the arena section of the circuit that was uh, built uh, just a, over ten years ago now. Yeah, uh, that uh, shortcut is it does feel kind of awkward as a driver when you go through it. And personally, I prefer the full full curves with the forward curves, uh, dump curves, and so on. But uh, well, at least you still have the plenty of fun at the old circuit. That first corner, does it not really become a hairpin anymore? Is it just a part of a quick chicane? Uh, there's different uh, layouts on it. So, I didn't quite get, the, get to see which layout are we using right now. But if it's the same we used in the 24 hours, it is very tight and it can be uh, very difficult to just fit these cars through there, even yeah, with this uh, like field of 30 cars. Some shades of um, the first chicane at Oschersleben, um, with, uh, uh, with walls on the inside and on the outside. Yeah, the drivers are going to have to be careful when they're filtering their way through on lap number one. And yeah, we've got 30 cars here for this race. Uh, I'll get the track map up as well. So uh, I don't keep just seeing, saying corner names. I'm trying my best to pronounce them around this circuit, but of course you've got plenty of corners like the Carousel, uh, the Dottinger Hoa Straight, and uh, the course the Mini Carousel but just before the end of the lap. And uh, now we go down to the grid. So uh, the cars will be starting at the back in the second half are Rob Hartley, uh, with the highest die rating. Then it's Christoph Kiard, Martin Waltham, Lee Diemer, Roy Verke, Alan Mitchell, Kevin Woods, Anwar Smith, Peter Van Gaal in 24th. 25th is Adam Delmont, 26th Lord Murray, 27th is uh, Cesaro Rizzo, Mick Barry in 28th, Ben Landemore 29th and Dave Christie in 30th and some of the drivers just saying on the on the chat in the session uh, that they uh, some of the drivers have got lost on this um, on doing their practice laps around this uh, particular layout of the circuit. Yeah I hope we, hope we don't have to go looking for them after the race so they <laughs> can get to the second race. That's right uh, yeah um, remember last season? Don't please don't do that again. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm sure he waited a good uh, five or ten minutes for him to finish his lap there. And uh, yeah, we're now onto the grid. We'll be getting this race started momentarily. We'll see what Giuseppe Iannucci can do about Stanislav Chapelevsky. I think going to be the longest lap of the season, and it should provide uh, some good racing. Yeah, still waiting for a few guys to enter the grid. At least I don't think in this circuit you have any benefit from starting from the pits. Don't think so. No, um, the amount of time that can be won and lost around this, around this track. Right then, uh, just under thirty seconds to go. And uh, Stelian Chapolevsky on the pole with Giuseppe Iannucci in second. Giuseppe Iannucci, a regular to viewers of the uh, Rick Mutek sports car series that ran on Monday nights a few weeks ago. Uh, their season finished. Here we go. Ready to go then for the first race of the day in the BSR Mazda X5 Cup here at the Nürburgring, the Nordschleife. We're underway and Chapolevsky lights up the rear tyres away from the line. It's a good start from Kip Stevens. Already gains one position away from the line. Jamie Ayres as well getting past Pete Newman who seems to be getting uh, swamped a bit here going into the first corner. Let's see how the drivers can handle it then. Chapolevsky into this very tight chicane right left and on the MHR Foxwell cars at the inside. Brian Holmes oh, contact. Oh and Terpel with around. the Momo cars. Uh, the Momo cars as well, that's Pete Newman and Brian Holmes I believe, so problem for the two teams at the top of the championship, Sam, the Foxfoot team and the Momo team. Yeah, and that's really something you don't want to do, you don't want to come into contact with your teammate, especially when the championship fight for the team, team title is so tight. It's the drivers now 
Uh, they've gone through the short part of the circuit, now they're onto the back straight already on their way quickly towards the uh, the beginning of the Nortch line for Chepilevsky already has an 8 tenths of a second lead over Giuseppe Iannucci, third is Nicholas Taymans, they have stayed in their relative positions, then Dries Nice fourth, fifth is Ash Beard, sixth is Jamie Ayres, seventh Gip Stevens with Adam McNally, eighth, ninth Max Wright and then side by side for tenth between Steve Hefford and the Foxford car of Rob Hartley, they're into the quick chicane here, not the slow one uh, that they were used on the Grand Prix layouts that they go and now they're going to be turning sharp left and onto the Nautilus Life now for the first time. Oh, so here that's uh, Martin Waltham on the back of Steve Hefford. A good start from Waltham. He's one of the biggest movers for the field so far. Up six positions. Lee Deemer has got past David Hampson. Uh, Lee Barmer looks like he's had a, a few issues through uh, the final part of the GP circuit. In fact, he's actually got. Uh, possibly a bit of damage to the rear end of his car, so could be struggling with that. Uh, but side by side racing just in front of him between uh, Hampson and Deemer, and it's Hampson that comes up on top. Uh, he's up to 15th place after spinning off in the first. Oh, goal. and who's that tire is issues at behind? Uh, Green Woods, uh, Rizzo. Oh, yeah, I believe that's what Wurzu got the uh, turnaround. Let's see on the replay. Let's have a look. Ah, uh, he Woods. got clipped by clipped from behind. Oh yeah, Rizzo. Yeah, it was Rizzo. Yeah, into the back of him, and oh, that that wall isn't too forgiving, and Rizzo gets a bit of front damage for good measure too. Uh, so that's what's happened to those guys. And there's more contacts. Uh, what's happened here? There's cars off. Mick oh, Barry. we have a battle for the lead. Uh, they well. were almost three wide going in. Good grief! Yeah, Chapelevsky down to third position then. Was leading on to, onto the Notch Life layout, but now he finds himself in third as they go into Arenberg for the first time. And it's Giuseppe Iannucci that leads the way. Second is Nicholas Taymans, uh, the Benelux driver, and Chapelevsky in third. And uh, Sam, that long section through uh, through the Flugpats and Cottenborn and uh, Schwende Cruz, then uh, you can do a lot of slipstreaming there. And it's not over here, is it? Here comes Taymans for the lead. No, usually this uh, downhill bit is not really an overtaking place, but I think at this speed, uh, this speed, it's, it's, it will work out into uh, this is uh, the fourth section onto Megsfeld and Callan Hard not too far away and uh, Nicholas Taman started third on the grid up to the lead then Chapelevsky still hanging with them in third uh, Dries Nice isn't too far away either he's another racer in the Ritmatech Sports Car Series and uh, has done some time in the BSR Winter Series as well ended up taking a win when uh, Ash Sutton and Wojciech Savinovic crashed into each other on the final lap of a race at uh, Brands Hatch now racing on the North Life in fourth place. Uh, this corner we come here. This could be a tricky, especially in the cold conditions, because it really unsettles the car and tends to throw their back end around. Really, this very fast section where uh, Alex Malensky flipped over in the BSR Winter Series race uh, during the Christmas break. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I heard. Remember someone having really. Uh, fun with that one. Oh uh, yeah, Andrew Whithouse was very uh, had, to, had to calm him down <laughs> after <laughs> uh, we saw that. Uh, one for Ben Landemore, I believe. Uh, he's just dropped down a few positions. He was in uh, well, he started in 29, but uh, looks like he's uh -huh. had that issue, Sam, that we were talking about that yeah. quick section. Yeah, exactly. That that's what I mentioned. It really unsettles the car, and from what we've heard from, from the drivers, this car really doesn't like that kind of uh, change in direction. He likes the, the flowing corners, but doesn't like the quick changes of direction. And yeah, that was Ben Landemore. He's got again in 25th place. So uh, not the start he wanted and shows you've got to be on your toes really around this circuit. I say in Chapelevsky now, we're heading on to one of the quickest parts of the circuit. We're on our way towards the carousel here on the opening lap. And uh, here comes Giuseppe Iannucci. Has he picked up enough toe to try and get past Nicholas Tamans? Uh, but if he ha uh, and, and he has... But whereabouts do you get the move done? I think he might just outdrag him here, Sam, because he's got the got the extra speed. Yeah, Giuseppe is he was able to make the move and here comes Zepleski. Also making the move on Nicholas. Almost like tandem uh, uh, cycle racing here. Then Cepelevski up into second position. It's whoever hasn't got the slipstream that's gonna be the one that suffers and especially when we get on to tossing a hoa, that's when the racing is really gonna get pretty crazy as we've got the top four separated by uh, probably less than a second going into the carousel here. Seven temps actually between uh, Giuseppe Iannucci, our race leader, and Dries Nice in fourth. 
Yeah, I think if you could get points from overtakes, the championship would be decided on this track. Yeah, imagine if we were keeping stats for lead changes. Um, well, we, well, we do keep stats for lead changes, but they only happen at the line. If we were keeping them in real time. That'd be pretty hard to keep up with here. And um, yeah, the top four there. Then fifth on his own is Ash Beard, the championship leader. Unfortunately, I think he's going to be really struggling now because uh, those guys will be able to pull away because of the slipstream. And Ash Beard is really going to be on his own now for the rest of the three lap race. And uh, being on your own around this 164. Uh, corner circuit sound probably uh, isn't really the best thing you usually like to be with someone no I suppose um, in the touch section it doesn't really matter but the, when they get the test rates it's going really going to hurt him uh, the next guy behind him is Jamie Ayers and he is still about four and a half seconds behind so I don't think Jamie will be able to catch him I think through my favorite part of the circuit really now uh, the iced curve S back all these corners now uh, going for this long left-hander and then into this quick right and quick change to the direction and uh, in previous races here in both the MX-5 and in the Kia Optimus we've seen uh, cars all spinning out here going out wide onto that uh, brick runoff area and almost going into the gravel and now over the top of the hill and you can see Inucci went a bit wide there that's going to put him at a disadvantage to Stelian Chapolevsky and uh, maybe even Nicholas Tamans as well this massive drop Imagine in the GT3, Sam, you really feel that when you go down the hill. Yeah, at this point, uh, these uh, four are changing the positions constantly. And I think the only thing we can tell that uh, possibly one of these is going to be on the podium. But we'll see. It's still uh, over two laps to go. Yeah, indeed it is. A three lap race around this circuit and uh, nearly at the, uh, the mini carousel going up towards... Uh, Schval Ben Schwantz. 90 degree left hander and up to the little carousel. There it is. And uh, no grip at all on the outside there, Sam, if you end up going up, up there. No, it, the line is very tight through there. And you just need to hope that, the, that you hit the line and uh, be able to hold on to it. Through the final corner we go then, well sort of the final corner, the final corner of the North Shipper section onto the, uh, the Dossinger Hoa straight and now we're going to see the speeds that uh, these Mazda MX-5s get. You may think for now that Taymans and Dries Nice are out of it, but they will pick up that slipstream off the back of Steady and Chapolevsky and they'll be right in the picture again. Chapolevsky going for the race lead then, he started on the pole and he wants to get the lead back before we complete the opening lap of the race. He's moving to the outside but you can see that uh, Taymans and Dries Nice, they've decided to pick up the toe from uh, Giuseppe Iannucci. Chepilevsky might lose out here and find himself in fourth by the end of the straight if he isn't too careful. Three wide, Taymans through the middle. And it looks like he might be the one that heads the heads the field going into the left-hander. At these drivers nearly touching 200 kilometers per hour. Uh, they are actually way past that. I looked at their speeds tour there. And they are hitting uh, 206 kilometers per hour. And I do believe that is the maximum that this car will go. Six in the slipstream. And uh, I was looking at Stelian Chapolevsky's speed actually, and yeah, he was a good five or six kilometers per hour slower because he wasn't getting any help whatsoever. Who's going to lead this first lap then? The timing line is there, and it's a Nicholas T Tamans that leads across the line. He leads uh, Giuseppe Iannucci, third is Stelian Chapolevsky, fourth is Dries Nice, 1.1 seconds separating these guys as they complete their opening lap. And into the first corner, oh, yeah, oh that's Tamans locking the brakes just a little bit, the car squirming about. Iannucci closes right up there through the first corner and the drivers are using all parts of the circuit on the exit and as this is the short section we're going to be quickly turning right any moment now there we go the DTM use this layout uh, when the last time I saw them race here and uh, yeah going for that section now and uh, running for the rest of the top 10 Ashbeard in fifth sixth is Jamie Ayres he's got uh, Rob Hartley for company in fact Rob Hartley's looking up the inside actually going through this uh, quick hairpin Momo Racing versus Foxfoot Racing. Uh, sixth versus seventh. And then eighth is uh, Steve Hefford, ninth Martin Waltham, and tenth Adam McNally. And quite a, quite a big uh, pack of cars here, uh, Sam, from, from eight, on, eight, eighth on back. Yeah, and we also just saw Christoph Killard uh, going into pits. And also Dave Christie has uh, pitted. And so, he, so has Alan Mitchell. Real squirrel stuff here between. Uh, Azam McNally and Dave Hampson. Hampson trying to get some positions back here. That should be him past the youth energy car into the chicane. Just turns in ahead. And uh, Adam McNally might even get passed by Lee Deemer here. 
as we exit the, the GP section. Yeah, Lee Deemer has had some uh, contacts and battles by the looks of his car. Yeah, the front end of that Mazda MX-5 definitely looking a bit worse for wear here in the early going. And, oh, he's going to try and go around the outside, is, is he? I think he is. McNally moves across, though. And they had to be careful there because if at the slightest part of, of uh, Lee Deemer was alongside, uh, both of them probably would have been going into the, into the Armco barrier, one of the quickest parts of the circuit. Yeah, looking at also on the spot that uh, some damage on the back of Kip Stevens' car. So I wonder if there's any connection between him and uh, Lee Deemer. Yeah, Lee Deemer has a broken front and Kip Stevens has a broken rear. There's something might have happened there on the, between those guys on the opening lap of the race. Let's check back in on the leaders though because they're about to go to Arenberg for the first time. Uh, uh, for the second time I should say. And Stalin Chapalevsky pushing Giuseppe Iannucci. Fair, you don't really want to get too close to the car in front at, through this part of the circuit. Very quick indeed, nearly 200 kilometers per hour again through this section. And Giuseppe Iannucci returns to the race lead. Started on the front row of the grid alongside Stalin Chapalevsky. And here on the second lap of the race, he is now back to the lead with uh, Taymans in second. Chapalevsky third, Rees Nice in fourth. And I'm just surprised to see Rees Nice just hanging back and not really getting involved. I mean, maybe that can't be a good idea, but at least uh, it would be helpful to kind of get your opponents and see how they're reacting to battle. Oh yeah, there's probably going to be plenty of lead changes though for the next uh, one and a bit laps. Yeah, I think Dries Nice is probably just waiting until he gets on the Dossinger for the final time before he really uh, unveils his hand. And uh, might be able to get the opportunity to maybe get a podium or who knows, maybe even get a win if he times it right. I don't want to get too much damage on the car and at the moment he's just hanging back in that uh, fourth position and allowing uh, Taman's Ianucci and Czechlewski to uh, squabble over the race lead. And meanwhile behind them, David Hampton is leading a large train of uh, these cars still. And I think the top 10 is also still any anybody's game from here. Yeah, we've got uh, Martin Wolf and we've got Hefford, we've got McNally and we've got Lee Deemer as well. Those two continuing their battle, Lee Deemer with that front end damage. A little look up the inside there into uh, this right hander, which isn't really an overtaking opportunity. Well, oh, he's off. Lee Deemer off into the wall, and that's definitely damaged the front end of the Mazda MX-5 this time. Uh, didn't see what was the cause of it. Maybe he ran over too much of the outside kerb. Uh, in front of him, we had that Tim Omakar bouncing, the, bouncing off the curves, and maybe that kind of scared him. Yeah, the, the Momo car of Hef of uh, Heffer, I think it was, yeah. And... Um, yeah, Dima going through the right-hander. Oh, loses it actually before he gets on the curves. Turn the power down there. and uh, Yeah, Lee Dima has to retire back to the pits. That looks like his race one is done. Interestingly, we should mention that uh, the reason why we're doing three laps today is because um, we, we cannot do two. Yeah, two laps would be about uh, 15 minutes in length, but uh, the, the iRacing service definitely doesn't like us doing two laps for some reason, so we've got to do the extra lap so that the results can count. And uh, here comes the battle for the lead again. Taymans versus Iannucci. Iannucci in the blue and black car, whilst uh, Taymans is in the uh, the yellow and white. Kapilevsky forging a path on the outside in his Apex Racing UK liveried Mazda MX-5. Could be the inside line for Kapilevsky here, and that should be him returning to the race lead for the time being. Whoa! Takes a lot of that kerb, and even though. Uh, that corner on the rating line is probably flat out in the Mazda MX-5 Sam, if you do a line that like Shevelevsky can there, you, there is every danger that you could understeer wide through that corner. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if you have the correct paint back, but at least on my screen, Shevelevsky is driving uh, with the Prosim colors. Ah, uh, okay. I've probably got the wrong one. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll make sure I get that for next week then. Uh, but Shevelevsky and the Prosim colors. Uh, it does drive for Apex Racing UK in the uh, the BSRTC, which yeah. means I think it drives for both it. teams, depending on the series. He's a freelance driver, then <laughs> you could mm -hmm. say. Is uh, we go out of the carousel for the second time, one and a half laps to go. Really, the carousel usually about the halfway mark of the circuit. You now up the hill through this S's section. That Arnco barrier so close on the exit and. Uh, it's Chapelevsky leading them round again. Second is Taymans. Third is Iannucci. Fourth three is nice at 15 kilometer board. 
Um, the kilometers from uh, the start line is uh, that sign. And uh, not too far away from the finish line now. We're not too far away from the, uh, the little carousel either. And then, uh, yeah, the long run down the Dottinger Hoa. And then we'll be back onto the start finish straight to start what will be the final lap of the race. And, and I can confirm that Zeppi does drive for Prozin in this year's. It's listed under the driver standings. Okay. And uh, yeah, the so Javelinski joined for Prozin, three of the big teams at the moment in this. Uh, series Pro Sim, uh, the Momo Racing Team with the likes of Dan Hunt, Jamie Ayres, Pete Newman, and uh, Steve Hefford in the ranks, and the MHR Foxfoot team, uh, who have been really good here recently, uh, with Ash Beard, with uh, Rob Hartley, with Brian Holmes, in the majority of the wins so far this season, and uh, Chevalevsky and Tamer is just taking very different lines, almost dancing around this uh, second half of the lap, and uh, Giuseppe Inucci. Probably can't even rule all four of these guys out, Sam. By the time we get to the first corner, they're probably going to be leading the race. I think this race will be decided uh, on the finish line. Because even if you get by someone on the long straight, there's still uh, enough straight on the main on the main bit that uh, it's still uh, you can get the draft and uh, make an overtake there. Yeah, definitely. That, that final chicane, there is quite a run actually from there to the... Uh, to the timing line and uh, if you do mess up with that final chicane if you go in too deep then you definitely could end up losing the lead and after racing for 23 kilometers you definitely want to do you definitely don't want to lose it in the final few meters onto the dotting and we go then for the final time Anwar Smith out of the race he'll probably be back for race two Lee Dima Lee Barmer also out along with uh, Ben Landemore and Dave Christie mm, I don't think this is the final time it's still only two laps remaining for me Oh yeah, this is yeah, this is the penultimate lap. We get to long yes. start the final ah. lap of the race. <laughs> All uh, they're dancing about, aren't they? And uh, Taymans is going to take the lead back from Chepalevsky. He's getting the bump draft. He's definitely getting a bump draft, actually, as they yeah. go by the camera there, off um off of Giuseppe Iannucci. Oh, are they trying to take our bump drafting? I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, two, two usually works, three doesn't. That usually ends up in a crash, and Chepalevsky taking to that curve on the inside. Gets back, uh, gets gathers his bearings again, and the car's skating about under braking going into this final chicane, using all that curve on the inside and on the outside as well. And right up against that armco barrier as we come over the line now to start the final lap of the race. 23.86 kilometers to go, and another 164 corners for these guys at the front to negotiate. Up for the line, separated by uh, eight tenths of a second. Uh, no, uh, no, no, one second on that occasion. Yeah, just to F put that in perspective, the uh, Asli Beard running fifth behind them. He's already 13 seconds behind. Top four is already. All of them are running in nine, nine minutes 16, whereas Beard is in uh, nine minutes 23. Oh, we've had just had a very big crash actually on the on the dotting of just before the final chicane and involved three cars, Steve Hefford, Adam McNally and Martin Waltham, is it? Yeah, it was. They were three wide and oh, Hefford gets into uh, McNally and uh, poor Martin Waltham gets sent for a ride as well into the Armco barrier at top speed. Yeah, if you uh, crash at that speed, there's not going to be much left of your car. Oh dear. Did we get a replay of that up on yeah, the... Yeah, we got the replay. Yeah. Uh, the the ProSim car will have been laughing all the way to the bank there, uh, uh, Kip Stevens, as he saw three of them just disappear off in front of him. And uh, yeah, Max Wright also into the pits on this lap, so problem for Max. All these drivers, if they make it back, they just need to get stay, stay there a few seconds, they'll get a brand new car and then they'll be on their way again. So um, we can probably see a few more of those guys uh, on the final lap of the race. Uh, hope, hopefully they get out quickly um, so we don't have to wait for them to finish their final lap. Uh, maybe not because uh, they took the toe towards the end of the lap and I think they have to wait for it to okay. uh, run over. So is that like 10 minute toe on this track? Agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, for, the, for those that towed, we're not going to be seeing them again, I don't think, no. uh, for, the, for the rest of the race. Uh, those that did, uh, I think McBarry might have made, oh no, he didn't make it back. Uh, who did make it back? Christoph Keel and Max Wright. Uh, been in the pits for about two and four seconds, so they were able to get their fast repair and get on their way. Uh, let's turn our attention back to the front, then the leaders are about to go on their way uh, to Arenberg for the final time here. 
Nicholas Tamans leads the way. He led at the start of the lap, but Steffi Inucci looks like he wants it back again. 185, 86, 87 kilometers per hour here as we go over the top of the hill. Too wide here between uh, Ianucci, who we see racing the Brinkman Tech Sports Car Series, and Nicholas Tamans, the first I've seen of him in this BSR Mazda MX-5 Series. Through the long left-hander, Chapelevsky not close really to make any sort of attack for second. And uh, Giuseppe Inucci returns to the race lead as, as uh, Rob Hartley gets past Ash Beard. So a change for position there between the MHR Foxfoot cars. Rob Hartley uh, up into fifth, Ash Beard down to sixth. Uh, is this possibly team orders or where are they in the championship standings? Ash Beard is ahead currently. Beard, um, yeah, and uh, Nicholas Tamans back to the lead again in the... <laughs> In her, the Vazdo X5s, uh, when uh, Taymans gets it quickly, he then quickly loses it again. And uh, I think Dave Hampson is off. Yeah, Dave Hampson is off. He's off at uh, Arenberg. What's happened to him? It looks like he was going side by side with Jamie Ayres. And uh, went off, tries to go too wide, hits the inside wall, goes back across the track, and uh, hits the second wall. And, um, unfortunately, with the cameras that I have, you can't really see him after that. Yeah, I had the same camera, just uh, taking a look on board. And yeah, that's a hard hit. I don't know if the car will be able to uh, drive back after that one. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's the grip that isn't available on the outside of that corner. And uh, yeah, problem for Martin. Oh, uh, Martin Wolf from. Oh, sorry, Dave Hampson. Right then, uh, back to the front again. Uh, Nicholas Tamans still holding off Giuseppe Inucci. Now uh, we cannot rule out Dries Nice either. We did say that he might just be waiting for that final, uh, final straight before the chicane to finally make his move. Uh, but Giuseppe Inucci doesn't look like he's waiting at all. He even is trying to have a look up the inside into this left-hander here. Chapelevsky almost getting into the back of him. I think he did. Also, a bit of contact then between uh, Stanley Chapelevsky and Giuseppe Inucci. Inucci gets the run here. I wouldn't uh, do a move here, but uh, we'll see what these Mazda MX-5's drivers do. Through this left-hand kink, flat out they go, and into the into this uh, quick hairpin bend. Now onto one of the long straights of the circuit. Well, I say straight, but one of the quickest flat-out parts of the circuit. So, yeah, uh, on this car it's basically straight. I don't think you need to leave for any of these corners slightest tilt of the steering wheel to get through this part of the circuit and Iannucci on the outside Heyman's on the inside nearly going onto the grass there Giuseppe Iannucci and Selin Chapelevsky will now begin the bump drafting Iannucci just has the lead and Chapelevsky almost gets into the back of him the slightest touch and all three of these guys would be off and Dries Nice would be taking the lead Heyman's now down to third position as Chapelevsky Tries his hardest to get past uh, Giuseppe Inucci here before we get to the carousel for uh, the last time in this opening race. Yeah, you could see that uh, Drisna's backed off immediately when he started noticing that uh, Zeppi was uh, going across the track and pump drafting. Yeah, almost trying to make it free wide, uh, the PSR TC regular. Now it's for the carousel. Definitely not an overtaking opportunity here. Very really single file down on the concrete part of the circuit. Enough again, and into the second half of the lap. Uh, one second between these four. Uh, fastest lap is currently being held by uh, Dries Nice. 9 minutes 16.159, probably because Sammy's picking up the toe off three Mazda MX-5s in front of him. Uh, yeah, most likely, but they've been running it very similar lap times. But yeah, one, 9.16.1 for Nice, 16.4 for Taymans, 16.8 for Chapelovsky, and a 16.7 for... Uh, Giuseppe Inucci, our leader, to our section for the final time. Yeah, well, to put it in the context, these guys are running in the draft with each other, they are two seconds faster than the uh, next fastest guys. But yeah, Ash Beard, who's been on his own for pretty much the entire race, doing 9 minute 20 frees. And to put that into further context, uh, what are their qualifying times uh, like? Uh, most of these drivers have been running in toes as well. Uh, 916-1 in qualifying for Taymans, 916-0 for Ianucci and our pole sitter uh, Chepelevsky did a 9-15-0. Uh, shows you the impact of the slipstream around this circuit. Uh, Giuseppe Ianucci not too far away from the finishing line now. 
heading down the hill and sooner or later we'll be at the little carousel and then for that the long right hander and onto the dotting of her for the final time and then uh, the slipstream will begin gaps opened up a little bit Sam now the gaps up to 1.4 seconds between the four of these guys at the front they'll probably close up again before we get there yeah but I'm surprised that uh, they've letting it open so much because uh, even if they can uh, wind up and get more draft they are still limited by the uh, gearing the right hander then the left hander Shapilevsky right with Giuseppe Iannucci up to the carousel the little carousel that is looking up the inside a little bit there as uh, Cesare Rizzo looks like he might have crashed on uh, the final lap indeed he has here come the leaders then through uh, the right hander onto the dotting Ahoa he's going to take the opening race of the day here in the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup at the Nürburgring the Nordschleifer circuit Looks like it's going to be two battles, then the battle for lead and the battle for third and fourth. You can't rule them out. Dries Nice is now deciding to make his move. He's going to go for third position and try and take it away from Nicholas Tamens And uh, Giuseppe Iannucci on the inside, on the on the left-hand side of your picture, on the right-hand side of Stelian Chapelevsky. And then it's wheel-to-wheel -wheel between Dries Nice and Nicholas Tamens. If they're going two by two, they aren't going to close up as quickly as they would if they were going single file. I think, I think uh, Iannucci knows this, and he's trying to duck back into the slipstream behind Chapelevsky. but here comes Dries Nice, forging a path on the outside, four wide folks, here we go, this might not end well, and it's going to be Nicholas Tamers that takes the lead back, Dries Nice forced out here, Chapelevsky up into second, down to third goes Giuseppe Iannucci, and Dries Nice still trying to find a gap here as we go into the final corner, into the chicane, I oh, Nicholas Tamers all over the place as he gets on the brakes, through the final chicane, and now it's a straight out run to the line, Right, who's going to win race one of the day? It surely will be Nicholas Tamens, but who's going to get second? Stalin Chapelevsky surely holding back Giuseppe Iannucci. The flag is out. And race one does go to Nicholas Tamens. Second for Stalin Chapelevsky, third for Giuseppe Iannucci, and fourth for Dries Nice. The top four separated by just half a second. Uh, that was a very good move by Tamens. He waited, uh, didn't go pull out of the draft too early, and when both Chapelev and I mean, Zepilevsky, Janucci and Dries Nice all uh, pulled out of the draft. He was able to just get by them uh, with that uh, speed advantage that he had maintained behind uh, Zepilevsky. Seven for Jamie Ayres, he comes across the line. Uh, Brian Holmes next along with uh, Kip Stevens behind him. And then, uh, see if we've got any battles going on further down the order. Uh, we have got... Uh, for us, for, so I changed for position, but um, oh yeah, we've got wheel to wheel stuff here. But, oh no, very ca car going very slowly. It's Adam Delmont, um, who I d think is out of fuel, and he's Only getting logically. help from his teammate. Just got just go back and check to see it's not a blown engine uh, for Adam Delmont. Uh, I'll have a look. I'm listening and I can't really hear anything. So his engine is definitely not, not running. Having a look now, he's uh, just going to the little carousel, uh, just looking back on the replay to see if it's... I think it's fuel. Okay. I think I saw him going off uh, at the same time, in the same position with uh, Rizzo. Hasn't got long to go. Yeah, he's got damage. Uh, but I don't think the engine blew at all. Yeah, if it's, I think it might just be a bit of help needed by his uh, youth energy colleague in uh, Peter Van Gaal to get him over the line. And believe it or not, there's still uh, still cars behind these guys. Uh, so uh, the next car along is Adam McNally, the youth energy, uh, another youth energy teammate. So he could probably help lend a helping hand here. Uh, they've still got quite a bit of way to go. Actually, if this was just the Notch Life a layout, then. Um, Oh dear, this might not end well. Here comes Alan Mitchell to gain a few positions. There he goes, up to 17th. Yeah, this was the notch life. We just have to turn right, and the, the finish line is literally just there. But he's got a bit of a way to go after this final chicane. Uh, these guys will all still be on the lead lap, which means they'll be eligible for the reverse grid anyway. Uh, the next car along is Lee Deemer. Uh, he's not going to be there for some time yet, so Peter Van Gaal might just get him over the line. I don't think I've seen this kind of uh, finish before. Oh, only at the Nordschleifer, I think. Oh dear, mm. as Peter Van Gaal nearly pitches his teammate into a spin. Here comes Lee Deemer, actually. Who's going to get this position? It's going to be 
There's a the line. And it's going to be uh, Adam Dell just ahead of Peter Van Gaal. And there goes Lee Diemer. Uh, next, it's going to be Steve Hefford, who's going to get, uh, should be 22nd place. Uh, Lee Barmer in a 20. Uh, he's a lap down, I believe. Uh, Cesare Rizzo is just. Yeah, I believe the Hefford uh, and Palmer they crashed out on the lap one. Okay. They're still being registered as being on the lead lap, but they are a long, long way behind. Uh, such is the way of the circuit, you can pit and get a repair for damage and still return and stay on the lead lap. If it's going to come across the line here and take what should be uh, 23rd place because uh, Rizzo has already finished. Uh, next along for us is going to be Michael Barry uh, going through the final corner. Then behind him it's going to be Kevin Woods. Uh, Barry should take that 20, uh, 25th spot, I believe. And a 26th place for Kevin Woods. I think that's everyone. Yeah, I think that's would be everyone. Okay, that's when we the finishing order then from the opening race of the day here at the Nürburgring Notch Life. A fantastic battle for first down to fourth. Nicholas Taymans takes the win then, his first win of the season. Second for Stalin Chepalevsky, third for Giuseppe Iannucci, and fourth for Dries Nice. Fifth, 15 seconds behind these guys was Rob Hartley. Sixth for Ash Beard, seventh for Jamie Ayres, eighth for Brian Holmes, ninth for Kip Stevens, tenth for Pete Newman, eleventh for Colin Robinson, twelfth for Roy Verke, thirteenth for Christoph Kiard, fourteenth for Max Wright, fifteenth for Martin Waltham. 16th for Lord Murray, 17th Alan Mitchell, 18th Alan McNally, 19th Adam Delmont, who got pushed over the line by his teammate Peter Van Gaal, 21st for Lee Diemer, 22nd Cesaro Rizzo, 23rd Steve Hefford, 24th Lee Barmer, 25th Mick Barry, 26th Kevin Woods, and then the cars one lap down or more, Dave Hampson one lap down along with Ben Landemore, two laps down Dave Christie along with Anwar Smith, who finished in 30th, so it's uh, time for the first reverse grid of the day, Salmon. Uh, yeah, let's see who's going to be ending up uh, starting race two on pole. Yep, I got the wheel ready to go. Uh, let's uh, spin it. We have a couple of few fools here, so let's see where it lands. And it might be... It is full. <laughs> well then, I believe that means that Ben Landmore gets put onto pole position. Uh, he did. He was in the pits. But uh, he finished one lap down, so I believe that means that he gets to start on poles. Second, Dave Hampson. Third, Kevin Woods. Michael Barry, fourth, and Lee Barmer will be starting in fifth. So the likes of Tamans, Chapelowski, and Uchi, they're going to have to uh, they're going to have their work cut out working their way through the field. So that's going to be definitely interesting to see. Well, that pretty much rounds up uh, race one of the day here. The Nurburgring. Run us up to the break. We're going to be set for race two. Three more laps around this iconic 23 kilometer circuit here in Germany. See you in a moment. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy, their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams. iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. 
iRacing.com. Delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back to Apex Racing TV and welcome back to the Nürburgring Nordschleife here in uh, race 2 of the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup. Adam Bath here with Sam Kumo once again and uh, Sam we are expecting a pretty large reverse grid here because not too many cars ended up not finishing not more than one lap down. Yeah the full reverse will be even more effective, effective than, than usual and uh, I think we will see many guys having difficulties through the first section. As, as they exit the GP circuit. Well, the likes of Stalin, Chapelevsky and uh, Taymans and uh, Iannucci, they're going to be starting at the back of the grid for the second race of the day, so they're going to have to be working their way through the field and got to be pretty cautious as well. They'll be trying to get as many positions as they can on the Grand Prix circuit and then they'll be having to judge their overtakes as uh, cautiously as they can so they don't end up like a few of the drivers uh, in race one. Uh, how they met their face of, of crashing off into the unforgiving walls around this Nürburgring Nordschleife circuit. And uh, yeah, not too long to go in the warm up session, just under a minute to go. And uh, realistically, Sam, would you say it's not going to be likely for Stelian Chaplevsky and Iannucci and uh, Tamers to, um, to replicate what they did in race one again? I think everything's possible. It really depends on how the uh, guys who start at the front, how well they work together and repeat what the uh, what we saw in the previous race between Zipelevski, Yanuchi and uh who was it? Uh Rich Nice Tame. and uh Nicholas Taymans, yeah, the yeah, yeah, Tayman. Yeah. yeah, we'll see what they do. I wonder if we'll have another breakaway pack at the front again, uh with the cars that started at the front. Well this well once again adds another dimension like the reverse grid always does. Uh, we'll get to see the fast guys working their way through this time. The warm-up session's going to finish in 3, 2, 1. And then, hope, and then we should advance to the grid. And we'll run you through that uh, momentarily. Here we go then. Let's run you through the grid for the second race of the day. On pole position is Ben Landemore. Second is Dave Hampson. Third, Kevin Woods. 4th is Mick Barry, 5th is Ali Barmer, 6th Steve Hefford, 7th Cesaro Rizzo, 8th Lee Deemer, 9th Peter Van Gaal and 10th Adam Delmont, 11th is Adam McNally, 12th Alan Mitchell, 13th Lord Murray, 14th is Martin Waltham, 15th Max Wright, 16th Christophe Quillard, the only Frenchman in the field, 17th Colin Robinson, uh, Roy Viverke, 18th Colin Robinson, 19th Pete Newman and 20th Kip Stevens, 21st Brian Holmes, 22nd Jamie Ayres, 23rd Ash Beard, 24th Rob Hartley, 25th Trees Nice, 26th Giuseppe Iannucci, 27th Stelian Chapelevsky, 28th our race one winner, Nick Raymond's and starting at the back in 29th position, we're missing a car, I think it's Dave Christie, uh, starting at the back in 30, 29th is Anwar Smith. And uh, Trees Nice just made it in time, he was having difficulties joining the session, but I see him on the list, although he will be uh, missing the uh, grid. I think a few others might be as well. Hefford, Demon, Stevens, possibly. Here we go. Runs away. Good start from uh, from Ben Landsmore away from the line. A good start from Lee Barmer already up past uh, Mick Barry going into the first chicane. And uh, Rizzo looks like he might be getting a few positions as well. The Momo racing car. And off goes Barry into the Anka Barry before we even get to the first corner. That must be the cold tyres playing havoc with the Mazda Mix 5s already as we go through the, uh, the first chicane. Is anyone oh, here? Oh, Ben Landamore is out around. Oh, no, the leader. Oh, and more, more stuff's kicking off. That's uh, Giuseppe Iannucci, our runner up in race one. And also uh, Nicholas Taymans, our race one winner. 
So they're definitely not going to be replicating any success. Uh, Fink Ash Beard might have been off in the process as well. Yeah, he's got damage to the front of his Mazda MX-5. He has got going again, though. And uh, the car starting from the pit lane, Sam. I think um, they've got the better end of this. They haven't had to uh, negotiate all this trouble. Yeah, just trying to figure out what, what happened here, because it was uh, incidents all over the place. Ben Landemort uh, started on the pole. Now way down the order. How did he get involved in any of this? Well, he lost the lead and then just spun it, putting the foot down on the exit of the first chicane and got hit into by quite a few cars, actually. Yeah, I just took a look there and uh, in the screen there were uh, three Foxwood racing cars and all of them uh, had contact with uh, someone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Brian Holmes, uh, Rob Hartley and Ash Beard all involved in uh, some, puff, some form of contact in that uh, opening few corners. Well, what this does mean is that Dave Hampson, the man that started second on the grid, leads. Second is uh, Cesario Rizzo, and uh, Kip Stevens has gone back to the pits, by the way. And third is uh, Peter Van Gaal. Fourth is Kevin Woods, who's got Adam McNally for company as well. And um, I don't know why I'm saying Kip Stevens is leading. Oh, it's because he's gone onto the wrong part of the circuit, that's why. Uh, <laughs> Kip Stevens uh, realising that you can't go into the Grand Prix pit part of the pits. Um, without having to negotiate the, the full lap. And a problem for Max Wright. Max Wright is off. What happens here? Oh, it wasn't his fault. Uh, the DuPont card, that is, I believe, Martin Waltham. Yeah, number 83. Uh, yeah, he lost it on the exit, and um, yeah, Max Wright uh, gets sent on his way into the Armco barrier, and that really saves Martin Waltham uh, himself from crashing out. And uh, here they come over the top of the hill then for the first time on their way towards Arenberg. Uh, David Hampson hasn't got a worry in the world at the moment. Cesare Rizzo second, third Van Gaal, fourth is Woods, uh, fifth is Adam McNally, sixth Christoph Kiard, seventh Pete Newman, eighth Lee Barmer, ninth is Martin Wolfram. And running at the top ten is Stalian Chepalevsky in that pro sim car, car nine. And then he's got two Foxfoot cars behind him in uh, Brian Holmes and Rob Hartley, which is probably the closest battle, closest battle we've got on track at the moment, so. Yeah, and also seeing the Delmont moving backwards, it looks like the damage is uh, causing uh, him some issues with the top speed at least. Well, Adam Delmont uh, had to get pushed to the line at the end of race one, and looks like he's dropping down the order already here in race two. Uh, side by side between Pete Newman and Christoph Kiard, that's over sixth and seventh. I think that's the Frenchman through. Ten positions gained for him so far, and uh, Peter Van Gaal up to second position, passes Zare Rizzo. Uh, Rizzo is very slow actually, I wonder if he's got uh, either a problem or a slowdown penalty uh, because he's just relinquished second place, he's relinquished third and fourth and finds himself in fifth as Stalin Chapelewski gets past uh, Lee Barmer who looks like he might have got issues of his own, he's got uh, Fox Yeah, Rizzo has more issues yeah. I think he just got that and might be having another slowdown Well, a slowdown penalty on the opening lap is an absolute killer because uh, yeah, it's a very big slowdown and uh, Chepalevsky past Rizzo now. Uh, that's Chepalevsky up into 7th place, 20 positions gained already. And just in front of him, Pete Newman trying to get past Christoph Kiard into this tight section. And Kiard allows him through. That's Pete Newman up into 5th. And uh, Lee Barmer dropping down the order some more. He's now down to 14th position. A slowdown to penalty doesn't seem to want to go away. Oh, and he nearly gets hit. Yeah, that caused uh, everyone behind him uh, get punched up and almost caused cont contact between the two automatic guys, uh, or Murray and uh, Rove Verke. Okay, the front again, Pete Newman isn't uh, slowing down at all. He's now trying to get past Kevin Woods. He's going around the outside of him. Might fancy his chances as well to perform a double overtake up the inside of Adam McNally in the Youth Energy car. So I'm racing in the BSR Kia Cup last season, racing in the MX5 this season, and uh, isn't it? Um, Pete Newman up to third place now. And uh, Chepalevsky looks like he's just got past Christoph Kiard. That's Chepi up to sixth. And it looks like the Foxfoot racing cars are following him through as uh, well. Sam Brian Holmes is there and uh, also Rob Hartley. They want to take these positions away from uh, Christoph Kiard. Uh, these two, some of the biggest movers in the field. Yeah, and anyone who has the damage after the lap one, they will be left in the dust uh, when we get towards the end of this uh, lap. And for the Long straight. Yeah, definitely they'll be uh, really struggling for top end speed there and 
Uh, that's what, where the aerodynamics is so enforced, important. Of course, there's not too much of it on these Mazda MX-5s, but it does have an impact. And uh, car 33, Rob Hartley trying to get up the inside of Kiyard here into the right hand of car 67, rising those kerbs on the inside and get pretty dangerous there. And uh, up the inside he goes, and up the inside goes Chapelevsky on car 12. That is Kevin Woods. Chapelevsky trying to crack the top five here in the early going. And he might just about have done it. Yeah, he has. So sending Chapelevsky up to fifth. Christoph Kiard still holding back Rob Hartley and Brian Holmes as we go into the carousel for the first time. That's a better camera angle, iRacing, since they've done the new build. We can actually see the cars go through there. Uh, yeah, previous, that is nice, sir. Uh, yeah, previous builds, we just got a face full of trees. Uh, so they've moved their, moved the position, <laughs> and that's, mm. that's good. We can finally see cars going through there. And uh, Chapelevsky up to, up, to, up to fifth. Kevin Woods down to sixth. Christoph Kiard in seventh. Eighth is uh, Rob Hartley, who nearly goes off. Ninth is Brian Holmes, and rounding up the top ten is uh, Martin Walford. Yeah, it might be like one, but uh, Hartley is not holding anything back. He's been act attacking really hard here, but I think his be best opportunity is uh, just uh, wait for the straight bit and make the move there with his teammate. Oh, oh yeah, I would agree as well. The racing drivers, they can get impatient, and looks like Christoph Kiard is actually getting a bit impatient and trying to get past uh, Kevin Woods. Uh, Chepolesky, by the way, is up to um, he's up to fourth place now, getting past Peter Van Gaal, and uh, looks like Lee Boomer have seen the demise of Lee Barmer once and for all. Uh, started in uh, started in fifth, and he's now back in the pits. What happened to the? Uh, yeah, uh, the he guy. went off and hit the barriers. Oh dear, yeah. Once he got offline there, there was no coming back, and yeah, Lee Barmer retires back to the pits. Might get a, and he'll be there for probably the rest of the race, having to wait for that repair. I mean, that, that yeah, that fast tow. So there we go. Right then, the cars aren't too far away from. Oh, Rob Hartley! Oh no, Rob Hartley! Oh, Sammy did say he should have waited, and uh, Rob Hartley is off, and uh, he's back on again. However, he is now down the order. He's down to eleventh. Yeah, I have no idea how was he, how he was able to hang on to that, and now just. To add insult to injury, he has a slowdown. And in the front of him is Cesar Rizzo and Jamie Ayers. Two Team Momo cars uh, going off. Oh no, Cesar, yes, yeah, oh dear, that is a disaster for the Team Momo cars. Uh, Rizzo looks like he just followed Jamie Ayers off. Uh, Ayers was already off, and Rizzo, dear me. <laughs> Way too much speed there. Yeah, well, teammates, they do everything together. Yeah, 10 briefings together, they do practice together, and they even crash together. Mm. You can't leave a man behind. And uh, he's saying, uh, Chep and uh, Chapelevsky up to what is now third position as we go down the uh, down the straight. Uh, he's in the toe of uh, Adam McNally, and he should pull back in front. McNally's not giving up, though. He's still hanging in there on the inside, and Chapelevsky isn't fully clear yet. Uh, Dave Hampson um, looking good at the moment with a six-second lead. However... Uh, with these three work together, Pete Newman, Chapelevsky and Adam McNally, then he could probably be reeled in by the time we complete this three lap second race. Oh, and oh, that's almost yeah. four wide bit behind them. Wow. Peter Van Gaal. Uh, oh, that's very close, isn't it? Yeah, Peter Van Gaal, that's Christoph Kiard, that's uh, Car 45, that's Ryan Holmes. And up the inside goes Kiard, so he maintains his spot inside the top five, but for how much longer? Peter Van Gaal doesn't get the best run, actually, on the exit of the final chicane. That allows uh, Ryan Holmes the run on the outside in the Foxfoot car with the blue roll cage. And he uh, should get that, actually, into the first corner. I think Van Gaal will slot behind. That'll be about a seventh. And that was only first lap. And uh, we saw plenty of action, so... I think we are in for a good race for the remaining two ra uh, laps here. Very wide nearly again here actually between Peter Van Gaal, uh, Martin Waltham. Oh dear! Into the right hander and uh, Van Gaal is able to just hold on. And, um, with any of those drivers might have been thinking we were going to the Dunlop curve. I have seen um, in a uh, different series here on iRacing where a uh, driver thought we were going onto the Grand Prix circuit and went straight on. I think we saw that in, uh, was it Ibiza, uh, where we're running the Indy road course, we saw one of the, was it Porsches, to take the oval course instead. <laughs> oh dear. 
I haven't seen that before, but yeah. Um, especially if you run in the Indy car a lot, then yeah, that probably would catch you by surprise. And then also at the end of the first lap, Dave Hampson has a 6.3 second lead. Second is Pete Newman, third is Stelian Chapolevsky, fourth is Adam McNally, fifth is Brian Holmes, sixth is Christoph Kiard, seventh is Peter Van Gaal, but for how much longer? Because Martin Waltham having a little look at the inside there as we go off the, the North Life part of the course. On the inside he goes, but Van Gaal will have to run on the outside. Yeah, for the moment uh, Peter Van Gaal is able to hold on to it. But I think uh, Waltham, he is looking really feisty and already looking forward for making the overtake. On our way to Arenberg again here on the second lap of the race. And um, uh, yeah, loads of battles going on inside the top 10. Oh, and behind them, uh, Asher Beard has an issue. Oh yeah, Asher Beard, he has got going again. It might be in the, the slightest touch with the Armco barrier. The Reigning champion. What happened here? He was. Oh, he lost the rear going through the second part of the corner and uh, just had a slight tap with the wall. I think mean, that's done him too much damage, but um, yeah, that slowed him down a little bit. Now he's down to uh, 13th place. Yeah, and also good avoidance from Iannucci. Oh, Giuseppe Iannucci, yeah, the, uh, the man who was at near the front of the race one um, has got no. no Bonnet on the front of his Mazda MX-5, he's still going, he's in 12th place, 14 positions gained, uh, so uh, he's definitely doing well considering he was off in the first corner, the same can be said for Nicholas Taymans as well, he's up in 11th place, 17 positions gained, in front of him, Martin Waltham and Peter Van Gaal are still going at it, we can't roll out Rob Hartley either, uh, these three having a fantastic scrap, and uh, maybe even further up the road, Selin Chapilovsky might have just got past Pete Newman uh, for second position, indeed he has, so the ProSim car gets another spot, but they can't do anything about Dave Hampson. If anything, Hampson's increasing his lead. It's up to seven and a half seconds now. Yeah, that's really surprising because in the previous race we saw that the uh, cars running in packs, they were able to run much quicker. But lap times so far are down from what we saw in the previous race. And whether that's due to the temperatures or not, the temperatures haven't changed really too much since the opening race. It's 21 degrees ambient temperature here, 21 degrees track temperature as Rob Hartley gets up the inside of Martin Waltham, that 7th position for the MHR Foxford livery car and uh, also Nicholas uh, Taymans up to 10th uh, place now, getting past Kevin Woods who uh, gets pushed back another spot Yeah, good work from uh, Taymans uh, from uh, recovering from the first lap and already up to top 10 uh, cars have started inside the top 10. Uh, let's see how many of them are left. We've got one, two, two of them. Uh, and they are Peter Van Gaal who started in ninth and is currently in seventh. I'll, um, in fact, I lied, Dave Hamp three, we've got three because Dave Hampson uh, started second and is leading. So uh, Hampson second first. Uh, Peter Van Gaal started ninth, is currently in, in, uh, in ninth. And uh, Kevin Woods, who was in third, he's now uh, outside the top 10, in fact. So uh, he's had a poor lap. And I don't think uh, for how long it's going to uh, Peter Van Gogh be in the top 10 because uh, Tamas is uh, really eager to get by. Oh yeah, he is. Uh, so that will demote him another spot down to 10th place, Peter Van Gogh. Uh, side by side here with the race one winner, Nicholas Tamans, the man from Benelux. And uh, Giuseppe Iannucci has also just got past uh, Kevin Woods as well. So uh, that puts him down another spot. Kevin Woods, who started in third, was eighth at the start of the lap. Now down to 12th as uh, Peter Van Gaal looks like he's going to have to finally succumb to uh, Nicholas Taymans. Well, problem for Lorne Murray, he's just gone back to the pits. Uh, Lorne Murray, who at the start of the lap was in uh, 18th position. Uh, the Automat car back in the pits, let's see what happened to him. Uh, oh, blown engine, that's what it was. And uh, yeah, Lee Deemer, that's his race done. Uh, Lorne Murray. Uh, Lorne Murray, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chapolevsky then uh, is, up to sec is, uh, is going is going wheel to wheel with uh, with Pete Newman here for second position. Two BSR TC stalwarts going at it, and uh, Chapolevsky takes the second spot. Twenty five positions. It's a good thing I've got you here, Sam. I'll be saying all load all load the different things. Yeah, it's been a long night. Yeah, uh, and we've still got one and a half races to go <laughs> uh, as we go up the hill into the carousel. Chapolevsky doing his best, but uh, good quality of drivers here with. Uh, Pete Newman in third, 
Brian Holmes in fourth and uh, Adam McNally in fifth. And onto the second half of the lap then, what can Cefalewski do? The gap is now up to 8.3 seconds between Hampson and Cefalewski. Even if they uh, close up down the, uh, down the Dossingahoa straight, I mean that's going to be enough to get anywhere near Dave Hampson by the time we get to the end of the race here. Of course we'll have one more lap after this one. But uh, yeah, Dave Hampson doing a stunning job at the front and shows I mean, if you get out front uh, by quite a few seconds and the opening lap of the race then uh, there's nothing really the rest of the field can do about you. Yeah, uh, well currently it's only 7.5 but I think the gap just uh, changes depending on the measuring points around the track. But yeah, it uh, certainly looks like it. Hampton is, uh, Hampson is able to pull away even slightly. Yeah, it's down to 7.4 seconds now. And uh, Pete Newman now into starting to feel the... Oh, it's off goes Adam McNally. Uh, that's a f it's, I don't think he hit the wall. It was just a quick spin. Oh, in fact, he did hit the wall, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's him uh, down the order now. I think that might be a bit of damage to his. If Energy Kai is just going to get passed by Giuseppe Inucci. Only outside he goes. Uh, so that'll push Adam McNally down to 10th place after that off. Uh, fortunately, he has uh, his teammate behind him to give him a push if he needs it. <laughs> needs it. Yeah, the Youth Energy team um, getting a reputation for that after mm -hmm. this first race. As uh, Peter Van Gaal under pressure from Ash Beard as well, just behind uh, him after that off. Uh, Ash Beard, who uh, we saw go off just at the start of the second lap. Uh, uh, just as we went onto the Nordschleife part of the circuit and uh, now he's trying to get past Peter Van Gaal and he's going off over the grass, that shouldn't result in a spin, no it doesn't, he gets off the gets off the power and uh, gets it settled back down, it's off oh. goes Van Gaal oh dear and Ashbeard just avoids it and that's the, se that's the second time in this same race Sam, where we've seen uh, drivers overcook it going into that, that right hander yeah uh I don't know, maybe the car just uh, has a habit of getting loose there. I mean, I wouldn't expect it, expect it to, but uh, I have more experience with the high downforce cars here. Just take a look at the replay again. You see... Ah, he hops the curb, inside curb, and that just uh, sets the car loose. And uh, that's resulted in Van Gogh dropping down to 15th place. Pete Newman versus Chapalevsky then for second position. Nearly fr free wide as well. Here comes Brian Holmes on the outside. This is where Chapalevsky got done, of course, in race one, where he had the opportunity to get a win. And ends up finishing in uh, third position. On the outside goes Pete Newman. Is uh, Chapalevsky going to try and take it back from Brian Holmes? Yes, he does. The inside he goes into the final chicane. We're about to start the final lap of, the, of race two. And Stanley Chapulevsky up to uh, stays in third position. Brian Holmes in fourth, and Pete Newman now finds himself back in second place again. Yeah, the gap to the lead is uh, still 7.5 seconds. So unless David has any kind of mistakes, he should be able to bring it home and get the win from this. But the second place is still up for grabs here. Dave Hampson was the second quicker than Stanley Chapulevsky on that last lap. Quite extraordinary. Chapelowski still is now back up to second place, getting past Pete Newman. Ash Beard getting past Adam McNally, and also Nicholas Taymans getting past Christoph Kiard into that first corner. Kiard trying to fight back, but um, really work. Taymans taking a lot of that uh, part of the circuit on the outside, the exit of the arena section. And uh, that's Taymans up to sixth position now, so a great recovery, as Sam was saying earlier, after his off on the first corner. Yeah. Uh the next guy ahead of him is sort of hardly about four seconds ahead and that might be a tough order to for him to catch up during this final lap. But I think he has his hand, hands full of trying, just trying to defend his position from Killard. The lap times are like, it's probably hard to... It's oh, what about Martin Waltham? Waltham. Yeah, Martin Waltham who... Uh, oh, he's just stopped. Stops on the exit. Uh, replay the is up. Going into the left-hander, minding his own business. Is it going to be a blown engine? No, he's just going through the right-hander. No, I don't know what happened. Uh, it didn't even sound like the uh, fuel was uh, running out. He's still, st he's still there. He's got going again. Now he stops. Maybe, oh. maybe have a problem. And he's got going again. <laughs> he's not <laughs> going again. 
Um, so maybe that was a quick, uh, I don't know, a quick toilet break, I don't know. Postman at the door, that was what happened. Yeah, the Royal Mail. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, the Royal Mail had arrived um, <laughs> at mm -hmm. uh, Martin Waltham is, is, from, is from the British Isles, so yeah, at, at 20 past 9 on a Sunday of all times, uh, yeah, <laughs> he gets going again. Uh, Martin Waltham down to 18th place now. And uh, yeah, don't know what was going on there, but um, yeah, it was for eighth at the start of the lap. And the battle for third continues. Oh yeah, this uh, Chapelowski versus Brian. Uh, no, it's Newman versus Holmes, I should say. Chapelowski's escaped a bit now. Uh, so this is going to be the scrap over the final spot on the podium as here comes uh, Brian Holmes. And it's the two teams at the top of the table. It's MHR Foxfoot versus Momo. Pete Newman on the inside and... Uh, Brian Holmes going to try and take the racing line on the outside here, going through the fastest part of the circuit. Brian Holmes cuts back to the inside. He knows, um, well, he's seen from previous races that there's no grip out there at all on the outside. And going into Arenberg here, Pete Newman has the position, but you can see there uh, Brian Holmes gets a fantastic run on the exit. Uh, these two are going to go at it once again through this fast section of the circuit and up towards this tight chicane. And a is Brian Holmes going to go for a dive up the inside into this part of the course? It's really not an o a place of the circuit to do overtaking, but Pete Newman decides to let him go. Yeah, at this point uh, we're still in the early parts of the circuit, and I don't think there's any point in uh, Brian Holmes to make risky moves. And I think Pete Newman just let him by. At the incident limit that we've got for this race, an incident limit of 20 here today. Uh, I don't think anyone's been disqualified as of yet. Um, one really, really string it, uh, the, the pack really uh, stretching out as the race continues. And uh, what's the gap between Dave Hamster and Chapelowski? Still six seconds, even though Chapelowski's on his own now. I don't think uh, inside the final 15 kilometers or so, Chapelowski's going to get uh, anywhere near Dave Hampson, unless Hampson makes a mistake, which you never know. Running through the rest of the top 10, then Hampson leads, second is Chapelowski, third is Brian Holmes. Uh, who's managed to pull away a bit now from Pete Newman in fourth. Fifth is uh, Rob Hartley with Nicholas Taymans, the race one winner in sixth. Seventh is Christoph Kiard. Eighth is Giuseppe Iannucci. Ninth, Ash Beard. And tenth, Kevin Woods, who's got Adam McNally the company. And McNally lost that position to him at the start of the lap. He'll be wanting that back off Kevin Woods. Uh, these two probably the closest drivers that we've got on circuit. We do have a nice battle further down the order, though, but Alan Mitchell and, uh, sorry, Adam McNally and Kevin Woods uh, they're trying to duke it out over uh, a spot inside the top 10. Yeah, we also have a battle for 14th place between Alan Mitchell, Robert Werke and Colin Robinson. Indeed. Uh, yeah, they're just going into that part of the course now. Problem for possibly Colin Robinson. He was very slow there. Uh, was it again. was a close moment for him, but he was able to just hold on to it. Uh, yeah, just about. It looked like the car was going to be pitched into a spin and almost certainly heading for that Marco barrier, but he was able to carry on and live to fight another day. Does leave a f lose a few attempts for a second to uh, Roy Verke in front of him. Uh, what's happened to Pete Newman? Because he's uh, dropping back uh, quite a lot from uh, Brian Holmes. And it looks like his top speed is way down. Could it be... I don't know what it could be, actually. Could it be fuel? He hasn't hit anything. Uh, he's coasting yeah. at 176 kilometers per hour here. And uh, if he goes at that speed, then um, then uh, Rob Hartley's going to eat him up in in no time at all. Oh, uh, Pete Newman touring here. Not going particularly slow, but uh, yeah, it's not as quick as these Mazda MX-5s are capable of. No, just trying to listen if he's uh, coasting uh, a lot. But it's uh, hard to tell here. But at least on that straight, he was way down uh, in uh, speed compared to Holmes and Zipilevsky. He's still got gears. That's, that doesn't seem to be an issue, but going through the carousel, Pete Newman. I don't know what that could be. Maybe he hasn't got enough fuel to get to the end or something. But then, even again, then again even not hitting your top speed isn't going to save that much fuel. Yeah, Pete Newman dropping off the pack now. That's probably him written off any chances of getting a uh, spot on the podium. And Brian Holmes is catching Zeplevsky. Oh yeah, he's really closing in on the BSRTC regular. Brian Holmes driving for Foxfoot Racing. Sony Zeplevsky driving for ProSim. Going through this very quick part of the circuit. Cars sliding about. 
as we're on the final lap of the race here in race two of the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup. And through the left-hander here, Levski, uh, the gap between the two of them is uh, nine tenths of a second. The cars have started inside the top ten there still, they've only got one left and that's Dave Hampson, our race leader. And they're closing on Hampson actually, uh, Sam, the gap's down to four seconds now. Yeah, they're closing in, but I don't think that is enough. Hampson might just be taking it a bit conservatively now that we've got to the end of the race. Christoph Kiard and Nicholas Taymans have just exchanged positions. Um, it looked like Taymans had managed to shake off Christoph Kiard, but uh, yep, Kiard back ahead, the Frenchman. So here come Chapelevsky and, and uh, Brian Holmes down the hill on their way towards the mini carousel for the final time here through this. Bastessa's section where we're seeing quite a few drivers go off in this second race. Uh, we saw two Momo cars go off here. We saw Peter Van Gaal also go off here. Uh, no Absolutely. problems for these guys. No points for them. Uh, no points for them at all. Yeah, that's going to be bad for their team's championship aspirations. Now we're on our way towards Dottingahoa and Brian Holmes is as close as he's ever been. right-hander and onto the tossing hoe. Now we're going to see the silly stream between the two. Maybe even, maybe even some bump drafting as well. And it's only two, two, nearly two seconds actually between Dave Hampson and Stane Chapelevsky. It's probably still enough for him. In fact, actually no. It's going very slowly Dave Hampson, I should say. But then again, he hasn't got the slipstream at all. And uh, Ryan Holmes is going to take second place here. Hampson isn't too far away at all, is he? And uh, I think it's going to be just a little bit too late for them to do anything. Adam Delmont looks like he's out of the race. He's just dropping down the timing screen now late on. Um, but he has got going again, I think. It's, it is interesting looking at the top speeds and Zepilevsky, even with a draft, is uh, faster than Brian Holmes. So that the damage on Brian's car is definitely affecting his top speed. There you go. And, uh, they're definitely not going to get to Dave Hampson, are they? Unless uh, Hampson makes a mistake. Zepilevsky should take second place. Unless Brian Holmes can lunge it up the inside, which he can do. Maybe he's late on the brakes, but Chepilevsky makes sure that there's no way through for that Foxfoot car. Through the final corner, checker flag is at the ready. And it's a surprise victory. Dave Hampson, second on the grid, took the lead early on. Built a huge gap, and no one could catch him. Checker flag, he wins race two of the day here in the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup of the Nürburgring. Second for Stadion Chepilevsky, third for Brian Holmes, and fourth should be uh, Pete Newman, just ahead of... Rob Hartley in the end. Oh, and we it's have going to be a battle with Christoph Kiard versus mm. uh, versus Taymans. Yeah, who's it going to be at the line? It is oh, by five thousandths of a second. Christoph Kiard in sixth, Nicholas Taymans in seventh. Uh, Giuseppe Iannucci will come across to take eighth, and uh, ninth position should go to Ash Beers. There he goes across the line, and Kevin Woods uh, should round out the top ten. Now it's a drag race between him and the Dima. And it was Dima that got it by uh, less than a hundredth of a second. So the uh, the MHR Foxwell car got the position in the final lap. Steve Hefford versus Alan Mitchell now. Uh, that's Steve Hefford ahead uh, after the chicane. And uh, that's going to be 15th place for the Momo Racing car. Uh, 16th place for Alan Mitchell. And uh, the next car is coming into this final chicane now. Adam Delmont with more damage his youth energy team to repair. Final corner, that'll be 17th place for him. Car nearly rolling over as he goes over those curbs. And then 18th place should be Peter Van Gaal. Uh, whereabouts is the last car running? Um, oh, Lord Murray's off. I uh, hope he returns to the pits, because that is quite a way away from um, the line. Uh, he's got going again, though. Not too far away, actually. It's just near the mini carousel. Uh, but he is the last car running on track at the moment. But we still have a battle for uh, between Cesar Rizzo and Kip Stevens. Oh yeah, Rizzo versus Stevens, Momo versus Oh actually, Grayson. yeah, Stevens is very slow. Uh, Kip Stevens, oh very slow, yeah. Um, not not um, not slow as in his touring, but um, yeah, not as quick as the guys in front of him like Rizzo and Jamie Ayres, who both managed to survive their uh, crash just before the mini carousel. Jamie Ayres is going to come around and take uh, 20th place in the uh, the Momo Racing Cup and in 21st should be uh, Cesare Rizzo and um, uh, next is going to be Lee Barmer I believe he's just heading down the Dottingahoa now 
They're just about to go under the bridge. And next up is uh, Max Wright and Lorne Murray who are going uh, wheel to wheel down the straight here. Yeah, automatic, automatic teammates here. And I think it looks like Max Wright might just have the advantage here, A, because he's got the cleaner car, and also he's ahead of Lorne Murray. And that should be a uh, 24th position for Max Wright, and then a 25th for Murray. And uh, Martin Waltham, whereabouts is he on the track? Oh, he's just negotiated the carousel. Um, uh, so he should be a bit of a way away yet from taking the finish in uh, this race, which has uh, gone off nearly... Oh, uh, Dave Hampson crossed the line just before the half an hour mark. And uh, Max Wright coming through the final corner now to take 24th spot, 25th for Lorne Murray. And uh, Martin Waltham, as long as he keeps going, uh, should take the 26th spot. And um, one car, I think, uh, just trying to look at the finishing order, uh, Ben Landemore, uh, Mick Barry and Anwar Smith, the cars that had issues during the race. Martin Waltham, who was, in, uh, who was only 18 seconds behind the leader at the start of the lap, uh, we, is now having to uh, finish the rest of it. Well, while he finishes that, we're running through the uh, finishing order then from the second race of the day in the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup. Dave Hampson takes his first win of the season. It's turning into a race meeting of first wins. Benny Chavalevsky takes second. That's uh, two second places in a row, I think. Uh, third for Brian Holmes. Fourth, Pete Newman. Fifth, Rob Hartley. Sixth, Chris Christoph Kiard. Seventh is Nicholas Tamans. Eighth, Giuseppe Iannucci. Ninth, Ash Beard. And tenth, Kevin Woods. Eleventh, Lee Diemer. Twelfth, Adam McNally. 13th for Roy Viverke, 14th Colin Robinson, 15th for Steve Hepford, 16th for Alan Mitchell, 17th will be Adam Delmont, 18th for Peter Van Gaal, who uh, pushed Adam Delmont over the line in uh, race one incidentally, 19th for Therese Nice, and 20th is uh, Jamie Ayres, 21st Cesaro Rizzo is Momo Racing teammate, in fact I think that's three Momo Racing cars in a row, 22nd Kip Stevens, 23rd for Lee Barmer, 24th for Max Wright, 25th Lord Murray, and uh, 26th will be Martin Waltham as soon as he's completed his uh, Dottingerhoa straight. And then after that, uh, Ben Landemore out after starting on the pole. And uh, Mick Barry, a uh, long way down the order, he had to make a toe back to the pits. And Anwar Smith finished one lap down, which means if we do get a full, uh, we'll wait and see until Martin Waltham crosses the, li crosses the line. Because I think actually Anwar Smith might get put down to two laps down. So I think if we do get another fall in this reverse grid, it will put uh, Michael Barry onto the reverse grid pole. Yeah, also got the word from Alan Mitchell. And I think he lost the position right in front of the finish due to miss shift, uh, shifting down to second instead of a third. And that's why he was uh, very slow uh, coming on the main straight. I uh, did wonder why uh, Steve Heffer was so far ahead of him uh, by the time those two got to the line. Yeah, that's what's uh, that's what seemed to happen to Alan Mitchell. And then Martin Waltham. Here he comes through the final corner. He's going to take 26th place as he comes over the line. There it is. Does put Almar Smith down to two laps down. So the, we do get another fall for the third race and final race of the day. Uh, that will put Mick Barry onto pole position. So Sam, let's get the reverse grid wheel up and uh, let's get the final grid for the day sorted. Okay, let's spin it and uh, see where it lands. Maybe another full. Uh, no, it won't be full, but it is 29. <laughs> well, that, that would be Anwar Smith, how we finished two laps down, so he doesn't count. It's going to be Mick Barry that's going to be put onto pole position for the final race of the day. Ben Landemore second, Martin Waltham in third, fourth Lorne Murray, and fifth is going to be Max Rice. Interestingly, Ben, Landem ben Landemore is going to be back on the front row again after starting on pole position for race two. See if he can make better use of it here in the final race. Well then, uh, join us after the break here on Apex Racing TV. Where we're going to be racing around the launch Lifer one more time for the final race of the day in the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup. Join us in a few moments. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy, 
Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams. iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Nick Candy, what a move. Truex in the outside, contact made. 56 slides in and a four. Who's oh, gonna be in the strife? Did he even give it to Ryan Truex? Truex is your winner over Tandy. Welcome back to Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. Welcome back to the Nürburgring Nordschleife here for the final race of the day here in the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup. And a good entertaining two races here. Adam Baff with Sam Kumo and uh, Sam, it's another full reverse grid and pretty much apart from one car, every single car in the field is going to be reversed. Yeah, it wasn't exactly full reverse but considering the guys we have on uh, lead lap, it was effectively a full reverse. So I think we'll see more of the same as we saw in the previous race and we might be in for another surprise winner here. Hope so. Um, yeah, first race went to uh, Taymans and uh, second race went to a uh, fantastic performance by Dave Hampson. And now in race three, uh, let's see what's going to happen between uh, the, the guys in this field where uh, yeah, we've had pretty much 28 cars reversed out of the 29 in the field. We've only got 27 here for the final race as it stands. But we've just got 10 seconds left of the warm-up session and then we'll be able to run you through the grid for the final three races of the day. And of course, uh, happy May Day bank holiday. We get a day off tomorrow. Oh, well, most of us do anyway. Um, <laughs> we'll see what... And uh, hope you're doing well. Yeah, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Uh, that was David Hampson's uh, first win in the series. Yes, it was, yeah. So we have two first time winners tonight with uh, Nicholas Tayman as well. We're getting down to the grid. Next week we'll be at Sebring, but today we're racing at the Nordschleifer and we'll see we have another first time winner. Michael Barry starts on the pole. Second, Ben Landemore. Third is Martin Waltham. Fourth, Lorne Murray. Fifth, Max Wright. Sixth, Lee Barmer. Seventh, Kip Stevens. Eighth is uh, Cesare Rizzo. 9th is Jamie Ayres, 10th Dries Nice, 11th Peter Van Gaal, 12th Adam Delmont, 
13th for Alan Mitchell, 14th Steve Hefford, 15th is Colin Robinson, 16th Roy Verke, 17th Adam McNally, 18th Kevin Woods, 19th Lee Deemer, and 20th Ash Beard. 21st is Giuseppe Iannucci, 22nd Nicholas Tiemens, 23rd is Christoph Kiar, 24th Rob Hartley, 25th Brian Holmes, 26th Stedin Chapelevsky, and starting at the back in 27th place, uh, due to Anwar Smith not taking part in this one, it's going to be Dave Hampson, our race two winner. And here we go. Guys, look to the lights above them. We're getting set for the final race of the day. Runs away, and it's a good start by Ben Landemoy. Might have an opportunity to take the lead away here from uh, Michael Barry, who's driving for ProSim. But here comes Martin Waltham through the middle. He might try and fancy his chances here into the hairpin for the first time. Uh, but ben Landemoy has the lead. Second is uh, Martin Waltham. Third is going to be Lorne Murray now. Michael Barry dropping down the order like a stone, but now he does that. And that's a bit silly, really, and that's going to cause a whole load of chaos. And that well. is a bumper cars here at the Nürburgring. Yeah, Dodgem's literally, quite literally here, and um, uh, who's involved in that? Lorne Murray, uh, Christoph Kiard, um, Mick Barry, his teammate Stelian Shapovalski also involved. Uh, quite a few Momo cars got involved in that. Uh, Steve Hefford has got heavy damage, uh, so has Jamie Ayres, and I think another pro some car as well, Kip Stevens, and, and that all started for Michael Barry lunging up the inside on, um, on, a, on one of the Automec cars. And it kicked off a huge chain of events, but Dries Nice battling it out with Lee Barmer for the uh, up the hill towards the chicane. And uh, that is Dries Nice up in up position, and Martin Wolfen passed them all for the lead. As we go through the, first, the chicane to go onto the launch Schleifer for the first time, so Wolfen takes the lead, he finished pretty much last in, uh, he did finish him last in, in uh, race two, and now he finds himself leading the way here. Ben Lantamore down to second, third is Cesare Rizzo, fourth is Dries Nice, then it is uh, Lee Barmer, then it's Peter Van Gaal who's got Adam Delmon for company, Ash Beard, Max Wright and uh, Roy Verke rounding out the top ten. And uh, behind them is a whole bunch of cars going sideways, uh, side by side, including uh, our previous two winners, uh, Nicholas Taman and uh, David Hampson. Yeah, Dave Hampson in 16th, Taman's in uh, 13th place here as we go into the uh, chicane. And we're not too far away from Arenberg when the slipstream really begins. Uh, smoke just in front of them as uh, Peter Van Gaal and... Uh, oh dear! Uh, that was uh, contact with Lee Barmer. And Barmer gets forced out wide and uh, that's him losing a few positions. And God knows what's going to kick off here, Sam, as uh, we've got about six or seven cars separated by less than a second as we go up the hill. Yep, here we go, side by side. And uh, let's see who is able to survive this. Max Wright on the inside, uh, that is Lee Barmer on the outside and behind them more side-by-side -side action, that's one of the ProSim cars. Uh, car 15, that is uh, Kip Stevens going at it with Rob Hartley and uh, Roy Verke also in the mix there as well. Kip Stevens possibly thinking of making it free wide there with uh, Tiemens and uh, Kevin Woods also in the mix there. Good half a, half a dozen cars all involved and all fighting for the same bit of track as off goes Kevin Woods into the wall, there was no saving that and uh, that's probably broken the car. He's uh, stuck on stuck to the wall and oh, we'll have to get into uh, reverse. Uh, Christoph Kiard. Yeah, that was he was able to save it. Yeah, unlike um, uh, Paul, like Kevin Woods, he's got it in reverse now. He's going to get going, but uh, yeah, that's what happens if you run a few cars wide going into uh, Arenberg. And uh, now four cars in a train. We've got uh, Kip Stevens, Dave Hampson, Lee Demer, and uh, Sandy oh, Chapelowski. Oh no. Peter Van Gaal. It's Peter Van Gaal. Well, uh, let's see what happened. Oh, it looks like he might have lost it on his own here. Went. Oh, yeah, went. Didn't get the apex at all right in that quick left hander. And uh, Dave Hampson, our race two winners off as well. Uh, Dave Hampson, who started in last. What happened to him? On a replay now, it's just after the incident. Oh, he gets, he gets nudged off the track by, uh, I think it was Lee, Bar Lee Barmer. Yes, it was. And, um, but yeah, fortunately, he, he does not have any damage from that. He gets going again in uh, 23rd position. Uh, for the time being, anyway, uh, as we now go on our way uh, towards the second half of the lap, it is uh, Martin Waltham leading the way. Second is uh, Ben Landemore. We can't rule out Dries Nice of possibly getting a victory here. That I think that would be his first win of the season as well. Hasn't done too many race meetings this season. Has been in the series before, though. Uh, he's he showed very good pace in the opening race. Uh, finished fourth, missed out on the podium. 
but uh, yeah, maybe he's in third. Uh, yeah, I think pretty nice, uh, sort some great pace early on, but maybe he has a little bit faded to, uh, during the season. And in the first race, he had the pace, but just wasn't in the right place at the right time uh, when we went to the, across the finish line. Very experienced driver in, the, in this car as well. Raced it in the uh, the Rootmatech Sports Car Series, which was run on Monday nights on Apex Racing TV in the middle of the night. And uh, yeah, did very well there. Unfortunately, um, finishes did was it weren't his uh, key thing. He was always running near the front, but uh, crashes put pay to and getting good results. And uh, now there he goes up the inside of Dries, up the inside of Ben Landemore. Uh, so that is Dries nice up into second position. Crazy battle going on further. Yeah, he has also some uh, identity crisis with the teams because he's running Team Momo livery, but he's registered under the Foxwood Racing. Okay. Uh, which is quite, uh, <laughs> uh, which quite con um, controversial considering the two of them are going at it for the title. So, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, too wide in the background. Max Wright versus Car 45. That is, uh, that is... Brian Holmes. Well Brian Holmes, yes it is. Uh, they were higher up the timing screen than I thought they were as uh, they squabble over 11th and Andres Nice has taken the lead. Sorry, uh, whilst that battle was going on, he's just uh, swooped around the outside of Martin Waltham and uh, yeah, before you even get to the carousel in one straight, Andres Nice goes from third to first. Yeah, that was uh, very quick. I didn't see if uh, Waltham had some issues or did he just uh, miss the breaking into one of the corners or something like that? Not like a move around the outside before he even got to the carousel corner. I don't know if he was going very slow at all, but uh, yeah, Dries nice. He now has the lead. Nine positions gained for him since the start of the race as we go into the carousel for the first time. Uh, fourth is now Ash Beard, the championship leader. 16 positions gained from him. And uh, he's getting chased by Adam Delmont and Nicholas uh, Tiemens is also there. Yeah, and more importantly for the team's championship, you have... Uh Foxwood Racing guys. Oh, uh, Ben Landemore uh, went off. Oh, ben Landemore, the man who was in third position, and he stops in the middle of the track. Hopefully, everyone sees him. Uh, he's very slow, and uh, thankfully, the, the likes of um, uh, Ian Uchi and Rob Hartley are able to get out of the way. See what happened to him. I've got an idea of what happened. Yeah, going through that right hander. Everyone else has been able to avoid the Elko wall, but uh, Ben Landemore wasn't able to, and I think that's definitely broken something on the left hand side of the car. Uh, he's going to be very lucky to uh, get that back Adam in one piece. Has beard, uh, moving up and now moving down. And Fox Foot Racing guys coming together. Oh dear. Teammates. I'm going to get Adam Delmont on the timing screen so I can have a look. At, uh, was it... Adam Del oh, it was Adam Delmont. And uh, yeah, and then Ash Beard can't help collect his teammate Rob Hartley. And uh, Youth Energy and Fox Foot coming together there. And... Ashbeard now has to get going in at 20th place, so it looked like he was going to be on for a top 5, uh, but that's gone terribly wrong. Yeah, Ashbeard also spun in a really bad place at the high speed and right on the racing line. It looks like he, he's been able to resume. And Landemore's uh, decided to retire back to the pits, so um, we're probably going to be seeing the last of him uh, for this final race. Uh, Peter Van Gaal also out along with Adam McNally. Uh, so those guys have uh, hung up their helmets for this race meeting. They'll we'll see them next week at Sebring. And Adam Delmont losing positions from uh, taking the slowdown penalty and drops okay. all the way to eighth. He might even still be serving it. He might even get passed by uh, Roy Verke and Lee Diemer. Diemer up the inside into the mini carousel. You don't often see overtakes happening there. And if you if you the car getting past them, you've got nothing to do about it. As I hear more oh, contact, that's contact. Rizzo. Uh, that is Cesaro Rizzo. How on earth did he end up there? Into the carousel. Oh, he hit the curb. He hit the curb, and that's a uh, almost a, a virtual death sentence. And yeah, he goes off into the Anko barrier. And uh, nearly got collected on his way through by uh, Christoph Kiard. Yeah, fortunately he was on the outside line there. Uh, usually drivers don't uh, take that line. Live streaming begins then on the on the on the uh, the dotting of Hoa. Max Wright, Adam Delmont, and uh, Brian Holmes all going at it here. Uh, sorry, Lee Deemer, I should say, as we get head down the straight. Lee Deemer with the white roll cage. Car 60-68. And uh, Delmont trying around the outside. That will quickly become the inside line though for the for the final chicane. All very close. 
Oh, so close. They almost touched going into that final corner. Yeah, I think they're just practicing for the next few next two laps. <laughs> yeah, they've still got two more laps to do around this circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, make 47 or so kilometers still to go here. Over the line they go, first up in the books, then Dries nice leads Martin Wolfen by six tenths of a second. Uh, third is uh, Nicholas uh, Tiemens, then uh, fourth is Giuseppe Iannucci. And uh, Rob Hartley in fifth with Brian Holmes sixth with the two Foxfoot cars there. Then they've got another Foxfoot teammate in seventh in Lee Dima, 8,000 Delmont, ninth Max Wright. Running the top ten is Kip Stevens. Yeah, Max Wright didn't get the good run out of the first corner and Kip Stevens was able to close in but just couldn't get the alongside. Going through the GP circuit once again then. Uh, penultimate lap here in the final race of the day in the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup. Quite a few cars had to have made trips to the pits to repair various bits of damage and get themselves going again. Jamie Ayres in, Cesare Rizzo in, Kevin Woods all visiting the pits at the end of that lap. And uh, Ash Beard, another man on the move, he's just uh, battling it out with car 24. That must be Lee Barmer. And he passes him off the circuit there. Looks like Lee Barmer's definitely got issues because Alan Mitchell and Lorne Murray all get by as well. Yeah. Uh, Lee Barmer's uh, car at least looks intact, so maybe it was a slowdown penalty. Been, yeah, it looks like he's back on the pace all of a sudden because he's now trying to get by the automat car of Lorne Murray here, Lee Barmer, going up towards the, uh, the chicane. The quicker chicane which we use on this layout, of course, the, the Grand Prix Formula 1 cars use that tighter chicane. Hope to be back racing on the Nürburgring in the not too distant future, but I mean, the only German Grand Prix at the moment is going to be held at, the, at uh, Hockenheim. Uh, look at the front, uh, Riz Nice has been able to pull away from Waltham and it doesn't look like uh, Waltham has uh, anything to match that pace. There you go then, yeah, 2.5 second lead for. Uh, for Dries, nice now. Second is uh, Martin Wolf and third Nicholas Tamens and fourth Giuseppe Iannucci. And this is definitely going to be the battle we're going to uh, uh, we were going to watch because as we go over the hill, we're on our way towards Arenberg, and uh, we're going to be probably seeing a bit of slipstreaming here and possibly some overtakes going into the hairpin. Giuseppe Iannucci is within striking distance, and maybe even the MHR Foxfoot cars as well as Brian Holmes tries to say, shape up a move on Rob Hartley. Yeah, this will get exciting for the third place. You have two guys, uh, privateers, who have, to have really uh, no play in the team's championship. And then you have two Fox Hood racing guys uh, fighting for the team's championship. There you go. Into the hairpin at Arenberg. And uh, yeah, Rob Hartley up in, uh, stays in fifth. Brian Holmes stays in sixth position. And uh, Tamens down to fourth. Giuseppe Iannucci. Up into third position. Stanley Chapolevsky looks like he's a man on the move as well. He's just got past uh, Roy Verke to put him into fifth, uh, into 11th position. 15 positions gained for the Pro Sim driver. Next on his list is his teammate Kip Stevens. That shouldn't take too long, but you can see, Sam, that these uh, Pro Sim drivers, they definitely uh, were all involved pretty much in uh, the contact in that first corner, which was started by their teammate as well. I think, uh, well, most of the Pro Sim guys, they are very experienced, uh, so. They maybe uh, attack much harder than some of their competition. So that kind of tends to lead to issues, but uh, they are also very fast. There you go, Chapelowski gets the move done on Stevens and that's him up into 7th position. They may be quick through this part of the circuit, but when they get onto the dotting of that front end damage will probably limit their top speed somewhat. Well, limit it compared to the speed that the cars without damage will be doing anyway. And uh, Chapelowski's next man on his list is going to be. Uh, Max Wright, who's in ninth position. Cars are started inside the top ten that are still there. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, and there might be even less than that. Those were the ones that started the lap. Uh, meanwhile, the battle for third still continues. And let me correct uh, myself. Uh, Janucci and Tamas, they are teammates, uh, driver, driver for the ID gaff racing. So we have uh, two teammates versus two teammates. We are right though in the fact that uh, the Foxfoot guys are fighting for the championship. Uh, this is probably the first time we've seen um, uh, we've seen these two, Iannucci and uh, Tamens. Yeah, they are new entries to the uh, series, and also they are still missing teammates. So hopefully, hopefully we can get that sorted for next week. 
Rugby Club we're racing in Florida at Sebring where we were racing in the IMSA Sports Car Series uh, today. We saw a fantastic race there in the Daytona prototypes, the German GT3s and the uh, Porsche 911s. Three brilliant races so far here in the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup around this superly long Nürburgring Nordschleife circuit. And we see the Brazilian guys making short work of uh, back to right, uh, moving ahead. Yeah, indeed, Jared Chapelewski up, up and uh, Kip Stevens both passed Max Wright. That's right down to 11th position now. Uh, and that puts another car that started inside the top 10 outside it. Uh, Chapelewski up to 9th position now, 17 positions gained. Kip Stevens down to 10th. Oh, he's up to 10th, but is three positions lower than where he started. And uh, Kip Stevens getting pretty close to his teammates here. Kip Stevens' car 15. Is Max Wright now starts to fight back, actually, as we go down this fast part of the circuit. Oh! Well, he was going to slide into Kip Stevens then, but uh, he was just able to keep it off the off the outside grass. Yeah, well, it's still a, a two laps to go, but uh, they're driving like it's the last lap. Dave Hampson, the race two winner, uh, has just gained the position. He's up to 13th place now, Dave Hampson. Uh, so looks like he's doing OK, despite uh, being off earlier on. And uh, yeah. Rob Hartley and Brian Holmes might have just exchanged positions. I think they have. Yeah, Brian Holmes up into fifth place now. So teammates here are switching positions. Maybe Brian Holmes is uh, a little bit faster at this time. So it would, yeah. be, it would make sense to switch positions and uh, let him attack the guys in front. Now Martin Waltham's having to uh, face attack from uh, both Nicholas Timmons and Giuseppe Iannucci, the two teammates. And... Um, yeah, he's definitely going to be worried here, uh, Martin Wolf. And this is something similar that we saw in race one with the the, the top four guys battling away. I think uh, these three, they're probably going to be stuck together for the next one and a half laps. Yeah, they must really aggressively driving here, uh, sliding the car, even touching the grass and curbs. Very hard here. On our way towards the mini carousel, then for the penultimate time, you can see Tamer's taking a much different line through that final uh, for that corner to uh, Waltham, and he's going up the inside. Is Waltham going to just let him have it? Up the inside, and oh, Tamer uh, uh, flies around the outside, and uh, Ianucci's going to follow him through. I think indeed he does, and maybe even Brian Holmes for that matter as well. So, in an instant, uh, Martin Waltham drops from uh, second down to four, uh, down to fifth. Yeah, this uh, kind of reminds some of the stuff we see in the Kias, where when you go off the line and get overtaken, everyone else uh, turns by you. Oh, and we have some issues with for Aran Demel Aran Again, Aran Delma. Yeah. Well, in race one he was pushed across the line. Race two he had a whole load of damage as well. Now in race three, uh, looks like he lost it on his own. Uh, had a huge slide through the long right hander and uh, hits the wall. Back comes back across the track. Oh, gets hit by one or two, and there's the third. And that's Martin Waltham uh, that hit him there. Oh, sorry, Dave Hampson, the race two winner, actually. And that's given Hampson a lot of damage. Yeah, he just uh, lost. Ah, uh... uh, yeah, because uh, Adam Down won't stop right on the racing line there. Could be a penalty for the next race meeting, but three wide in the battle for second. Here comes uh, Rob Hartley on the outside. In the middle, it's Giuseppe Inucci. On the inside, it's Taymans. Then behind him, it's Rob Hartley and Lee Di and uh, Martin Waltham all going at it. So uh, we'll see what happens here as we come down the straight into the chicane to start the final lap of the race. Uh, I'm surprised the teammates are not uh, pushing each other. Well, it's the oh, dear, I thought that was going to be a disaster. Oh, no, that is. That's teammates taking each other out. Uh, oh, that's no, not that's the kind Nicholas of pushing Tiemens. I was me meaning. <laughs> well, there's a quarter panel push, and that was Tiemann's taking out the, uh, Giuseppe Inucci. Inucci carries on pretty much unscathed. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a few words said on the on the team speak or on the Discord or on the Mumble or whatever it is afterwards, or maybe even the Facebook uh, group. Yeah, just take a look at the replay. Was it kind of here? Uh, so they come over the hill. Yeah, that's just. Uh, there's really, really no reason for that. That really has um, 
settle matters for them. Uh, I think that's probably the end of the day for uh, Tiard. He might have, uh, Tiemans I should say, he's retired back to the pits, indeed he has, so that's him done. Another car into the pits is Max Wright. Uh, looks like that, that damage he, he picked up from clipping Adam Delmont has been enough to warrant a meatball flag. And uh, he's come into the pits now uh, to serve uh, probably that and get a new car and get going again. Another car in Christoph Kiard as well. Uh, so another car with damage. We've got quite a few cars in the pits now, actually. Uh, in this third and final race, usually always is a race of attrition, and uh, today it is proving so. And the battle for second is still on, though, between Iannucci, Holmes, Hartley, and uh, Martin Waltham still hanging in there. Yeah, I also saw that uh, David Hanson is uh, moving up. He is currently ninth, but he has picked up some damage from somewhere, so I don't know if He's got involved in some of the incidents we saw earlier, or what? Yeah, I think he, I think he picked up a bit of Adam Delmont. I think when he was stopped in the middle of the circuit, um, that's that's the reason for the damage to the front of his car. The race two winner, uh, behind him he's got Roy Verke as well. Uh, all these guys up inside the top ten. Uh, cars that started inside the top ten that are still there. We have got one. Uh, Martin Waltham is uh, is one of them. That's two, and then. Um, uh, Kip Stevens, free, free, uh, free cars that start inside the top ten. They're still there, and we still got uh, about uh, half of the lap to go. Uh, actually, even more. Maybe even more than that. Yeah, Dries yes. Nice is uh, just only four kilometres into this 23 kilometre lap, so there's still 20 k's to go for uh, for Dries Nice, and uh, he's just on his way towards Harrenburg for the final time. Over six second lead over the, the New Yorker Giuseppe Inucci in second. Brian Holmes in third for UK and Ireland, and uh, Brian Holmes up to second, actually. Uh, so that's that battle going on uh, towards Arenberg. Yeah, indeed it is. Uh, two MHR Foxfoot cars versus uh, Giuseppe Iannucci, new team for this race meeting. Hold on the brakes into Arenberg and Brian Holmes into second place. And this is proving it to be a good race meeting at the moment for, uh, for the MHR Foxfoot team. Not a Momo car in sight at the moment. Yeah, they're currently first, second and fourth. And I think uh, Rob Hartley will be looking to make it 1, 2, 3 for them. But Ianucci really attacking hard here. Using all the curbs and oh, yeah. even more. Using a lot of the grass there, Ianucci. Uh, in his pursuits to get by, you can see a lot of rear damage to both him and to uh, Rob Hartley's car. And uh, don't rule out Martin Wolf and possibly getting drawn back into this if they start squabbling about. Going through a very quick part of the circuit, which pretty much is single file. And uh, now into the part of the course where the, uh, the changes of direction really happen here. And we see a few cars getting caught out, especially in race one, I think. And Ianucci. With the probably the cleanest car out of the out of the three cars here, at least at the yeah. front anyway. Mm. He has a little bit of damage to the rear of his, of his of his car, but it doesn't seem to be affecting his pace at all. There's Tiemann's uh, out of the race. With Adam Delmont, Peter Van Gaal, Adam McNally, all those guys have exited the session. Uh, we've got 20 cars on track at the moment. And the last of them is uh, Steve Hefford, who is... And here is comes Hartley. Uh, Hartley going for second place. Uh, for third place, I should say. There you go. Yes. Up the inside he goes, and he is through. So Hartley up into the podium positions. It makes it an MHR Foxfoot 2-3. But you can tell that Ian is not going to give up on that. And uh, he might fancy his chances up the inside before we go on to the long, uh, the long fast part of the circuit. Uh, he's going to have a go through the kink. Nearly bump drafting the Foxfoot car, has a little look to the inside, thinks better of it and knows that, uh, that the Foxfoot car of uh, Rob Hartley will put up a bit of defence. But now surely Samuel is going to pick up the slow through this part of the circuit and he'll be able to get the position surely by the time we get to the carousel. Yes, and uh, even if he gets the position here, they will still be swapping position uh, all the way to the finish. So here's the dilemma, do you overtake now or do you wait? And just to hang on to it and try to make the final draft. Credit to Rob Hartley. His uh, Foxwood car still is pretty uh, strong in a straight line, and it's meaning that, oh, as Rob, as he's now resourcing to finding different ways to get by 
uh, Giuseppe Iannucci as Rob Hartley now closes in on his teammate Brian Holmes as we go through uh, this left-hander and up towards the carousel. Ah, right, the issue here for Hartley is that uh, he's also catching the draft of his uh, teammate and if he doesn't uh, try to make, a, make an overtake then obviously for sure Iannucci will be trying to overtake him. Less than half a lap to go then, up to the carousel. This is the battle over second position. They are seven seconds behind our current race leader, Dries Nice. Into the carousel we go, there it is. And now on our way for a very quick part of the circuit where it starts to descend down this hill in uh, this fantastic undulating circuit that is the Nürburgring Nordschleife. And it's Foxworth racing 2-3. Brian Holmes in second, the UK and Ireland driver. Rob Hartley in third, driving for... Uh, uh, driving from Carolina and uh, Giuseppe Iannucci in fourth from New York so um, American feel to this battle here uh, also it is uh, Foxwood uh, 1, 2 and 3 Dries Nice is listed under the Foxwood Racing of course yeah so it's going to be a very happy day for those guys even though uh, Dries Nice does have the, the Momo Racing livery on his car he's definitely racing for the Foxwood team and a 1 2 3 will do wonders for their championship going into this race meeting. Uh, the team has uh, already a 300 point lead over Momo. I'm sure 1 2 3 will, be, uh, will do more to reinstate uh, the fact of them leading, them the cha leading the championship. Not too far away then from the mini carousel for the final time. Oh, that, that's a, that goes wide there, does Brian Holmes. It's Rob Hartley the opportunity, but. I wonder what they're going to do when they get onto the Dossinger Hoa. Uh, so I think probably the best tactic for them is probably to do a bit of bump drafting. Yeah, I think that's the best because uh, that gives them two cars in a row. And if uh, Janusi tries to make a pass, he will be left alone there while these two guys can uh, help each other. Probably pick up a toe off both of them, Iannucci, but by the time he gets alongside, he'll have no one behind him to help him. And then he'll probably just have to fall back behind. That is unless... Um, Brian Holmes and Rob Hartley start fighting amongst each other, uh, which could happen. Mm. And they just need to coordinate and decide which line they are going to take. I think the preferable line might be for them to uh, just take the right side of the track. Oh, well, this will is give this them is the inside for that the first start corner. Oh, this is messed up matters. Oh no! Oh dear! That was nearly a disaster. That was a, uh, almost contact between the two Fox or Racing teammates. And this is going to really ruin their momentum going on to the Dottinger Hoa. And this gives Giuseppe Inucci the chance. We're going to go three wide now down the, down the long straight. Three, four kilometers along here. And Giuseppe Inucci at the moment has his foot ahead. Uh, but surely the MHR Fox foot cars, there you go. Slot back into the slipstream. They'll be able to pick up the speed. And Inucci will surely just get blown away. By the two teammates here is Brian Holmes and Rob Hartley should both go by, but Iannucci's not giving up. There's still plenty of this straight still to go, and Dries Nice isn't too far away from taking the victory here as, uh, as Iannucci now slots back into the slipstream of uh, Rob Hartley. Now this, ruined things, now this ruined, ruins things for Brian Holmes, because it means he's now got no one to help him into the final chicane. And meanwhile, Dries Nice coming through the final chicane now. Brilliant. Uh, race three and he's going to take his first win of the season and make it a one two three possibly for the team no it isn't going to be a one two three because rob brian holmes isn't going to finish in third second it's going to be rob hartley it's going to be a fox foot one two but giuseppe Iannucci takes the final spot on the podium two podiums in a race meeting for him and rob hartley sets the fastest lap of the race on the final lap giuseppe Iannucci third holmes fourth and martin wolf and rounds out the top five yeah, well, if we saw something there, it's that uh, Foxwood Racing doesn't have any team orders. No. <laughs> well, I don't know how to execute them. Maybe maybe we should lend a hand. Meanwhile, two teammates going at it uh, to the line. It's uh, Chepilevsky versus Stevens, and it looks like Chepilevsky's making... Uh, Stevens, sorry, is making sure that Chepilevsky gets across the line ahead of him. Yeah, uh, Stevens hit Chepi the brakes before the Stevens. finish line. If Hampson comes across the line, takes ninth. Wojfa Verke should come through and take tenth. Next up is Alan Mitchell versus Ash Beard, and off goes Alan Mitchell. Oh dear. Uh, Mid Mitchell got hit by Ash Beard, and now he is really stuck. Uh, no, he makes uh, is able to get his car away from there. Oh yeah, three point turn needed, I think. Um, 
Or he would have been given a minor because uh, he hit the wall <laughs> when he was doing the reverse. Uh, he's going to come across the line and take uh, 13th position. Jamie Ayer should be next along. Uh, that'll be 14th place for him. And Lee Barmer in 15th. 16th for Max Wright. Uh, 17th is going to be Christoph Kiard. We'll see where Steve Hefford is actually. He's not too far away from the mini carousel. So uh, we won't be having any Max Wrights from last season, I don't think. Um, yeah, I think we're all happy for that. <laughs> I think we had a similar thing in the winter series, actually. Um, I think Cesaro Rizzo might have started a lap just as uh, the winners crossed the line. And uh, we had to wait another 10 minutes for him to finish his lap. Uh, but yeah, here, come, here comes Christoph Kiard. He's crossed the line and takes 17th. Nicholas Tiemens isn't finishing. Kevin Woods is going to take 18th. Colin Robinson uh, should come through and take 19th place. And then uh, we've just got to wait on Steve Hefford. Excuse me to come round in. Uh, he will take uh, he will take twentieth position, the last car running. Yeah, let's just go on board with the uh, Everett while we wait for him. On his way towards the mini carousel now, using all the curbs on the outside into the mini carousel now. Goes into that dip. Make sure he doesn't hit the curb. He doesn't want to do what some other drivers have done. I think it was Cesare Rizzo that did that early on in the race. Now into the right hand before going on to the Dossinger Hoa. Great track to drive this and light lift off before fussing your foot back down on the accelerator and now onto the Dossinger Hoa and you keep your foot down, you can do whatever you want really for a good 90 seconds or so. Yeah, uh, they can uh, sit for them your drink, read the newspaper, whatever. These all things you did during the 24 hours or so? Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Although it was much faster in the Audi than this. Oh yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah, probably almost half the time of this. There's a uh, over the line past the tourist p exit of an entrance. Uh, Go Steve Hefford. 190 kilometers per hour. He's hitting in his Mazda MX-5 as he goes down the hill and into the final chicane. And he should clinch that top 20 position for Momo Racing. Uh, Hefford, who going into this race meeting was, uh, as I look at the driver standings, he was in about sixth position in the standings. We'll see if he's there when we finish because uh, we're for Verke, Brian Holmes, and Wizard Law Murray definitely had good race meetings. Uh, but here comes Steve Hefford now to take the final finishing position. Right then, uh, so only through the finishing order. Dries Nice takes the win. Second, Rob Hartley. Third for Giuseppe Inucci in the end. Uh, fourth for Brian Holmes. Fifth, Martin Waltham. Sixth for Lee Diemer. Seventh, Stadion Chapelowski. Eighth, Dave Hampson. Ninth, Roy Viverke. And tenth, Lorne Murray. And turns out the reason why Kip Stevens was uh, slowing down wasn't to make sure that Chepi finished ahead of him. It was because he had a slowdown penalty and he didn't serve it. So hence, so hence why he's dropped from eighth position all the way down to uh, down to 18th. Ninth for Dave Hampson. Tenth, Roy Viverke. 9th for Verke, I should say, 10th Lord Murray, 11th Ash Beer, 12th Alan Mitchell, 13th Jamie Ayres, 14th Lee Barmer, 15th Max Wright, 16th Christoph Kiard, 17th Kevin Woods, 18th Kip Stevens, 19th Colin Robinson, and 20th Steve Hefford, 21st Nicholas Tiemens, 22nd one lap down Ben Landemore, and then two laps down Adam Delmont, as well as uh, Cesaro Rizzo, Mick Barry, three laps down Peter Van Gaal, and, Lorm and Adam McNally, also three laps down. And then Sam, final thoughts before uh, we leave the Nürburgring. A good race meeting as always, but and as as always, it was a race of attrition as well. Yeah, it was a long race uh, for all of us, and uh, it was uh, good that it was just the uh, three laps uh, we learned from the past to not use the time race here. But also good, to good see uh, first time first time winners here. Uh, also with the guys who are also racing here for the first time. Right, well, uh, my voice is just about gone. Uh, well, before, before we leave, we can tell you that tomorrow, uh, the Club 70, the, the Club 70, the iRacing <laughs> Porsche Cup heads to its next race meeting. You can join us for that Monday at 8.45 British Summer Time. And Tuesday, the BSR Formula Renault Series returns before we head to uh, the BSR TC race night on Thursday. And it all kicks off again at the weekend. Saturday, we've got the uh, the SRA Proto GT Series, as well as back-to-back uh, -back races in the... European Pen Power V8 Supercar Championship on Saturday night. Sunday as well, uh, we'll have the three usual braces again. The IMSA Sports Car Series, the 
uh, the BSR Master MX-5 Cup and the Club 73 Touring Car Championship. Looks like we're about out of time then. So my thanks to Sam for being on the cameras and in the comms box. And yeah, three different race winners, three all, all three new race winners in the BSR Master MX-5 series here at the Nürburgring, the Nordschleife. From all of us here, good night to you all.